All right, okay. I think we're all set. Yes, I would like to introduce a good friend of mine, a brother in the art. And uh, before we start, if you don't mind, uh, just uh, I want to say thank you uh, for this wonderful idea of Nelson that he put together us, uh, Jamie Seabrook, myself. Um, it's such a pleasure and honor to share uh, not just the math, not just uh, camp information, but uh, uh, share friendship uh, together. Um, this is true brotherhood. Um, not that brotherhood association, but we have a, a really a good group of people that uh, we feel the same all the art. So many blessings to you. We always honor the Lord for everything uh, we do, for everything we have, because we understand without him it's impossible. Uh, sometimes we take so much uh, um, uh, honor for what we do, especially in the martial arts, which is very, it's up to, it's up to you, your training and, and yourself and, and your energy and, 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 and uh, your dedication and so much. Sometimes we take so much of us and we think it's, it's because of us, but ultimate is because the Lord who give us the strength to pursue and um, to finally um, be who you are. So uh, just I want to take say thank to the Lord for this wonderful opportunity to be with good friends, good people. Um, we ask in the Lord to direct this seminar today and give us, us the, the good thought, um, the good energy, Lord. And we do everything because it's, it's you power, because you father and the holy name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. So I would like to uh, introduce a good friend of mine, um, a, a person that I got very few people in the art that I look up to. And Mr. Nelson is one of them. It's such an honor and a pleasure to introduce to you my friend, my personal friend, a brother, a great instructor from Chile, South America. It's the, it's the last country in the south of the America and this wonderful person it's gonna share the art with all of you guys Mr. Nelson Alvarez all the best thank you sir be ready enjoy guys thanks to you sir okay if you can mute yourself that will be good like the intuition and introduction in the seminars all the seminars have a description all the seminars have a description Así que yo dije que iba a presentar una pequeña forma personal. I uh, will show a little uh, personal form. I call it short form K3 <laughs> for this special occasion. So let's try it. Attention stands. First of all, uh, Sebastian. Sebastian will be helping me. Um, let's go with the salutation. First of all, no, uh, hagamos el saludo primero para comenzar una clase. Acá, no, no, no. Meditation stands. Of course. Salud. Good. Okay. And one. <laughs> okay, this will be difficult. We will use party wing to uh, start the form using parting wing as a salutation. So just do the, the same um, good maneuvers, like the salutation, but in the upper body, use parting wing, three moves. One, two, three. That's K3, okay? So let's try again. Is use the is, is use just the parting wing upper body, but with the foot maneuvers of the salutation. One, two, three. Yeah, good. And then salute. You know that's this is the number four of parting wing, but anyway, this will be just three move by technique. So then go back. Okay, continue with the salutation. Continuamos con el saludo. Cover my treasure, protejo mi tesoro, ruego no tener que usarlo. And then from this position, we will use 
one more time, three moves in this fashion. Circle protection. One, two, three. Looking at the nine o'clock to your left. Okay, so we are doing salutation. Come on, saludo. Vamos al medio, abajo. Y solamente tres movimientos. Fíjense. Aquí, aquí se puede decir. Here, we, uh, someone can say there's two move here. There's an uh, upward power and a strike. But for the purpose, for, for the purpose of the form, just use this as, as one. Okay. I, later I will explain why. So one, two, three. So let's. Ah, oh, Fernandez coming. Look, guess what? <laughs> Hola, tarde, salud. <laughs> Mirando, tú estás así, ¿eh? Pointing there. And you can point in there. So the, 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 the form can take a look from different perspectives. Again, from the beginning. Looking at 12 o'clock. Solidation with party wing. One, two, three. Salud. Go back. Cat sense. One, two, three. Again, three moves. And again, three moves with I would call this uh, next technique is fight source, but the first three moves as an isolation in the, in the form, okay? It's an inward block, this time from the three o'clock. One, one run house kick and a hand sword. That would be a, a kind of isolation for the form. So we are here, estamos aquí en Citro Protection, y hacemos un inward block derecho, un run house kick derecho, you not work hand sword. Eso va a ser parte de isolation. De un isolation. That will be part of the isolation of the form. Why? Because this is again party wing. The next moves, the number three, four, and five is party wing and five swords. So four, five, six, and your left leg, six o'clock. Okay, again, let's go to the beginning from the beginning. Okay, let's go again. Party one with the salutation. One, two, three. Salute. We're back. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Part of five swords. And then one, two, adjust. Moving up to circle, three. When you was trying to do the number four, let's say an opponent comes from six o'clock and pick your neck. So you will just a little bit adjust to 12 o'clock and go with, first of all, hit this, hit with a salutation in the, in the, in the head. It's a move taken from another senior. One, two, and three. So at, at this point, if you uh, notice, we're using, we're using just left, right, left. Again, from the beginning, so we will move. There's only the, uh, left two techniques. One, aha, parting wing. Hagamos parting wing. Saludo. Secret protection, three. Isolations, one, two, three. Continue with five swords. Left, right, left, adjust. Shuffle forward, hit, hit the head. Knee, sorry. Knee on the, you know, the application of, uh, sorry, my phone. Uh, you know the application of grip of death. So you are buckling with the left leg, hitting the head, groin and kidneys, grab, but this is a really important move in the form. When you use your left, you know in grip of that, the next move is with the right, but that will be changing the application of the form. So use your right arm behind you, and do a real left crossover 
right crossover, sorry. Cruzan por detrás de la pierna derecha. And unwind 36 degrees. Again, again, six. I will move, me pondré un poco más adelante, I will be moving forward to take a close look on that. We have one, two, three, and use the right arm behind you. Vert is right crossover, unwind, step through with your left, and let's go, and now let's move to Dari Maze. Just three moves. Remember, three moves. Oh, that it means we come to grab a double, double wrist uh, grab, break the arm, check, middle knuckle, or vertical punch. It depends. Okay. O sea, los que saben dar teammates hacia atrás, ese es el problema. Por eso que quiero que los muchachos lo estén mostrando de lado también para que salgan en cámara y se alcance a ver. Vamos con Dirty Maze. Let's go with Dirty Maze. Dirty Maze, Dirty Maze. One, dos, tres. Solo tres movimientos. So in this way we have just three moves and one more time. Left, right, left. So we are in the cat, right leg, uh, right leg cat stance. And from there, we moving, adjusting back to 12 o'clock and looking at six o'clock in our left cat stance. Nos echamos atrás y nos colocamos en un cat stance izquierdo. From here, we strike with a front kick with the, with the left three stance, side kick with the right, adjust, pointing and looking forward 12, and back kick with the left to six o'clock. And then, Landing forward to 12 o'clock. This is the last technique. So from the beginning, but vamos a dar desde el principio. Tenemos desde el principio, iniciamos con parting win en el saludo. Parting win in the salutation. One, two, three, let's go back. One, one, two, three. And then one, two, three. One, isolation, two, three. One, two, three. Remember, hit the, hit the, acuérdense de golpear la cabeza. Hit the head. One, two, three. Vertis, unwind, moving. Yo me devuelvo más acá. Moving to six o'clock. Now, the hands, we have the hands here, in this fashion. And go with the, that's the first move of uh, Dirty Maze. Second, two, three. Move back. Nos movemos atrás. Cat stance izquierdo. Uh, cat stance, left cat stance. Front kick, left. Twist stance. Side kick with the right. Adjust. Point in 12. And back kick with the left. Landing forward. Landing in 12 o'clock. Y bajamos la pierna izquierda al frente. Después de poder con la derecha hacia atrás, bajan la pierna izquierda al frente. Immediately, immediately when, when we land with the uh, left leg, immediately when we go with the left leg, let's go with the go with the last technique of the short form key three. Left, right, left, but with a sweep. That is some four, oh, sorry, that's a... Uh, Flipping the storm, keeping the last, whatever you want to call it. Flipping the storm. Izquierda, derecha, izquierda, pero con un barrido de la pierna derecha. Left, right, left, and then land and salutation. And that's the formal salutation of the form. I'm done, my friends. Now, we have three, 32 people. Okay, one more time, last time, at least before to explain some uh, topics on this form. Okay, so salutation with, um, and maybe application if you want it. Salutation with party wins, one, two, three. Yeah, 
leave their leave their uh, left hand there. Dejen la mano izquierda ahí. This is called something like uh, the variable and constant. It's a class of, uh, like you, like me, sorry. Taking some personal classes with uh, Sir Tatum. So this will be the variable and this now will be the variable. The full, no, second part, the occidental part of the salutation. It's a part that added this. And then there uh, nine, Papua Nueva go secret protection, one, two, three. Let's go to three with round house kick and sword. Mm -hmm. And hand sword. Uppercut, adjust, left leg. And hit the head. Toma la cabeza. Grip of death. Grab, toma la cabeza. Pero no pueden usar, but you cannot use your right, right hand in this part. Someone is taking your hand. Alguien le está tomando la mano desde aquí cuando van a hacer eso. Esa misma mano lo traen. The same guy you can bring in below you. Two, dirty maze. One, two, cut stance. Actually, you can do in, at that part a knee kick. It complements the lot of category that are in this form. So you can do a close knee or you can do a knee kick, but the important thing is go back to a cut stance, left cut stance, front kick with the left, side kick with the right, just pointing 12, back kick with the left, landing forward, clipping the storm, clipping the lance, one, left, right, left with a sweep, salutation, and move back. Uh, before, before I explain why the, the way the techniques are, are put in that fashion, in that way, I would like to introduce my point of view, humble point of view, what are, for me, techniques. I will try to be shortly, briefly, but techniques in Kempo can multiply and multidimensional ways to do it. You know, you have here about, ustedes han escuchado de training tool, han escuchado de sirve o no sirve para la calle, que es posible o no sirve para la calle, las técnicas de que es posible o no sirve. Uh, you have here about that, que is for the street or not, whatever. <laughs> but at least for today, just for this form, I would like to explain a little bit, just a little bit about patterns we can find in the techniques. So what happens if you are doing, ¿Qué pasa si ustedes están haciendo? What happens if you are doing left, right, left? Desde el principio, since the beginning, until, and, you know, 10 degree black belt. ¿Qué pasa si ustedes están haciendo el mismo patrón de movimiento? Y este es uno solo. And this is just one, one pattern. Because you know, most of you know that parting wing, one, two, three, is the same, this is in the horizontal plane, parting wing, one, two, three. Secret protection is the same, but in the vertical plane, that's another example. Clipping the storm is the same, now in the diagonal, ahora está en diagonal, one, two, three. So it's, for me, it's just a pattern. And if you are, let's say, five, six years using the same pattern, I, I think you will be defending with that pattern, not the way on the uh, technique. No, no se van a estar defendiendo con una técnica, se van a estar defendiendo con un patrón. Ojo que, uh, this is the, the same way to open, a, let's say a window, or take a look at the, uh, some book, or maybe take your back, it's the same. So <clears throat> what I put in this form is just the pattern. And number three by the name, K3. But now, before, if we can have the time, but don't worry about that. Eh, si tenemos tiempo, le ponemos las aplicaciones. Pero ahora vamos viendo. Now, let's go. Let's go doing, uh, taking a closer look at these techniques. For example, I will, I will use just parry wing, for example. 
si tomamos solamente parting wing y lo leen por el libro, if we take uh, just a parting wing and we took from the book, I mean, the, the big one, the red, <laughs> you will see something like a, a neutral ball, but it's a modified neutral ball. Your uh, legs are in a neutral ball, but your hands need to be, I, I need to remind, this is just by the book. Okay, I know some people can put uh, a left hand forward to uh, stop the motion of the guy, para detener a la persona, pueden usar la mano izquierda, pero el libro, por algo lo quiero usar como, that's the reason I want to use the book, teach the modified neutral ball because my legs are in neutral, but my upper body is in forward. That's the reason it's called modified neutral ball. Okay, so if I do this, I can stop and I can go with an application of the form. But if, if I'm putting neutral in forward, I, I have a false trouble of my uh, right leg, right arm if I want to stop in with that. So left, modify neutral, forward, neutral. It's a torque technique. And the only, uh, well, this is a, it's an application for the whole technique, the, the rest of the techniques. Mr. Parker used to say, uh, I have that in some videos, all, the, all your weapons come from your center and rotate, rotate uh, around your center. Todas tus armas salen del centro y rotan desde el centro. Y, y, y pueden tomar cualquier ejemplo. Hola, Rodrigo. Pueden tomar cualquier ejemplo. You can pick an, any example of any technique. Y, en, y, y todas las uh, armas que usamos rotan. It's called something like uh, Duncan Hara in Japanese. Hara. It's, uh, you can go some, with some trivia in there. It's the number six chakra. So when we do parting win, we put our hands in the center. We can do this. It's closer. We can, uh, five, fifth chakra. We can put uh, this, the hands in this fashion when we roll back, but this don't have trouble enough to strike the nerve in the median. So that was the reason uh, Mr. Parker used to say, all your hands, all your weapon come from your center and rotate from your center. Todas tu arma viajan desde el centro y salen desde el centro. That's the reason to use that. And now, now that was the reason I used in the um, parting wing salutation. One, two, three. Let's try it again. That was the case of parting wing. Let's try it again. Salutation with parting wing. One, two, three. Move, guys. You can. Yeah, and then salute. Mueven, vamos atrás. Let's go back. And one, two, three. This is, like I said, parting wing in vertical position. One, again from my center. Again from my, the, the nuevo desde mi centro. One, two, three. Okay, again from my center, tuck the elbow. One, two, three, it, that's a isolation because I'm using our, I'm using a right leg, right, right, and leg. That broke the theme of the form. Eso rompe el tema de la forma. That was the reason I use, I, I call it an isolation, okay? One, two, three, but if you see continue and if you continue with five swords, this is again, again, but in win, but this time not with a chopping punch with a hand, but a uppercut. One, two, three. Actually, we can go over and do the four, the last move over the neck, in part in five swords over the neck, in parting wing behind the neck below, okay? Then hit the head, 
two kidneys going right forward. I will be moving forward. Close your arm behind you and then go with the guardian mace. One, two, three. Cat stance or knee kick. Pueden hacer un cat o un knee kick. Y luego se devuelven and then back. If you take a look at this, this will be an important part too. Okay, left, this side with the right, adjust, pointing forward, and back kick with the left, immediately landing forward with the lancing, well, sorry, uh, clipping the stone, clipping the lance. One, two, and remember, we will use that for the salutation. So this is the part we will be doing the twist. Esta es la parte en donde estaríamos usando el twist. Pero ah, el oponente aún está aquí, entonces vamos a usar su pierna derecha que está ahí al frente. We will use the front leg, the, rear for, uh, the right leg to sweep it. And then close the form with the normal salutation, full salutation. I would like to see if uh, you can do it or perform it. And just one time. Bien, Juanito. Quiero verlos. Silvio, can you try? Traten, a ver. A ver si tienen. Ustedes, muchachos, háganla. Se supone que se la aprendieron ahora. No me ayudaron durante toda la semana intentando hacerla. Ustedes recién la aprendieron. You just learn it. I'm just kidding. They, they, they was working with me the whole week. 33 people. Wow, that's zero. I'm just, what's the name? Uh, someone can help me with the name for uh, the word in Spanish, telonero, Juanito? Opening act. Opening act. So I'm just acting as an opening act. <laughs> yes, it's a warm up, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Juan. Thanks, Juan. This is Sir Silver, yes, it's coming. Okay. Did you get it? Last thing I want to explain before, maybe you can take some note. Whatever the case, I, the, 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 the official recording, the blue one, the, the universal pattern, the blue one is recording. That will be the official recording. I will be sharing that with. I will be, I would like to, to introduce the, for me, most important point in this form. So if you can just take a seat and prepare for some question. Um, después de eso, siento que se nos eso. Después de eso, si quieren, podemos hacer alguna aplicación si es que alcanzamos, porque ya estamos más o menos en la hora. Pero, what is the theme of the form? More, ¿Cuál es el tema de la forma? Más que, more than the left, right, left. Más que eso. Valentina, hello. Hola, Valentina. Um, more than that is the way we are turning. What, that's one of the main point of this form, main point of the theme of this form. Uno de los puntos más importantes de, la, de esta forma para mí, en términos personales, es la forma en la que estamos girando. Primero, we first start pointing 12. Al principio comenzamos a las 12. La segunda técnica fue a las 9. So, next technique, the second one fue, was 9 o'clock. So you turn, you turn 90 degrees. More people is coming. Uh, 90 degrees. And since I'm using the major lines, I need to change from 90 degrees, like the chore from one, for example, like chore from one. You know, one, two, and then that, and then that, and then that. But the way we are doing that is adding 90 degrees on each technique. 90 degrees. On each technique. What do I mean with that? ¿Qué quiero decir con esto? La primera técnica que hacemos va a las 12 y luego giro 90 grados. And then I turn 90 degrees. The third technique, if I have 90 degrees plus 90, then I need to turn 180 degrees. 180 grados. So, tengo no, 0, 90, 180. If I plus 90 degrees plus 180 degrees, 
what is what's what's the name what's the number 90 plus 180 is 2270 and that's the reason and that's the reason the the next technique is coming from six so i have zero 90 180 and then 200 and 70. So it's a way to approach adding 90 degrees. And that's actually is the reason. Y esa es la razón también por la que la llamé corta tres. O sea, corta K tres. Short K3. Because if I need to change in 45 degrees, then I need to add the same techniques and the main manner uh, lines and doing the opposite side. So again, 0, 90, 180, 217, and 270 plus 90 degrees, what is the number? 360, 360, right? So that's the reason I'm doing right, grip of death. And I'm saying, oh, ahora tengo que girar 360 grados. O sea, que el ataque de nuevo viene desde allá. So the, the next attack is one more time from that position. So I need to turn 30, 100, 30, 300, sorry, 360 degrees to do um, uh, dirty maze. But now it's problem. Problem because the full circle in the in the universal pattern have three hundred and sixty degrees. So whatever the case, if I need to turn again to come back to twelve, if si quiero volver a las doce de nuevo, voy a tener problema. Si giro, if I turn back, that would be broken the theme of the form. Eso estaría rompiendo el tema de la forma. And that's the reason I'm using. The equation formula, and uh, please listen this carefully. I'm using the equation formula to delete some movements, delete some movements of the extension of that image. The extension of that image is something like a one, two, three, and then why you why you escape from me? One, two, one. Three and front side. And you can ask, eh, well, at the back kick. Well, and then the answer is another. I'm not only using the, I'm not using the same uh, extension, but the left, left front kick, right side kick, and back side kick, back, uh, pardon, uh, left back kick is taken from, push me, what, come, from side, and you know that uh, technique, encounter with danger. So why is there? Because I actually turn, gracias, Esteban. Porque está ahí, porque ya giré, 90, 180, 270, 360, and I can turn. Uh, ya no puedo girar de nuevo para volver acá, mirar acá. Ya no puedo girar de nuevo. ¿Por qué va a ser tan importante? Porque este es mi análisis de las formas. Cuando me preguntan instructores, como hace un par de semanas, Héctor Jofre me dijo, ¿por qué define the stop? ¿Por qué define the, the, the role? Why define the role? If it's a gun technique from the front, you need to defend yourself from behind. Or why, why in long tree, why in long tree, you have pressing wedge, but you need to defend yourself from 4, 4.30 or 7.30, since the attack is coming from the front. So my point was, form are not teaching only patterns and how to use it, but how to develop the perceptual speed. You know, we have three uh, kind of speed in Kempo. 
physical, mental, and uh, mental speed and perceptual speed. And each time we, we are going moving forward in forms, each time we need to anticipate the guy. Long tree have that problem in trust and which. So you need to, someone is trying to choke you, but from behind. Uh, another example can be long uh, five. We are here and you know, backbreaker is from there. The easy way is take back, uh, backbreaker from here. La forma fácil de tomar backbreaker es dándose vuelta por la derecha, but the form is asking you going from, from your left shoulder and do the whole technique from that side. So it's saying to you, for me, in my humble opinion, the form, la forma le están diciendo en mi humilde opinión para ustedes, prepárense y anticipen, y para eso se necesita velocidad perceptual. Y eso va a suceder en la forma 4, y eso va a suceder en la 5, 6, y todas las formas que están arriba. Entonces, la forma en que se giran los ángulos, la manera en que se giran los ángulos, es para ir anticipando. Pero como yo ya giré, but since I turn 30, sorry, third, 360 degrees, Sebastian have more English than me, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> since I turn, the only way that I can turn one more time is not in the same plane, because you know the universal pattern is not flat, right? So I prepare this, I was turning this, I don't know if you can see that. It's the same. It's the same like Pepsi. <laughs> okay, and then I was turning 90, 180, 270, and this side need to be to that side, whoa, 370, sorry, and 60, and 60. So I was just turning in this, I just was turning in this plane, but you know, the universal father is this. So the last technique when I turn with, um, Ah, and continue with danger, thanks. When I turn, I, I don't turn in this, in, in this X, sorry, uh, X. I turn in this way. Did you get it? That's one explanation of this part. This, one, two, three. I'm not turning in this way. I'm turning in this way. escape from the problem, <laughs> from the problem to turn <laughs> in the horizontal plane, like the techniques, vertical, horizontal, diagonal, vertical, but it's the same theme, it's the same theme. How to you improve, how do you improve the way you can uh, anticipate your opponent? Of course, we can do a uh, let's try of uh, for example, if uh, if you want an application, we, I, I can finish with this. If you have some questions, but just five minutes. Let's do it from that side. If he start pushing me, I can do this. And actually, the salutation. Let's go closer. And actually, the salutation. I can sweep it with that, and I can use part of uh, oh another one. This is fake. And I'll have a salute. And when I roll back, I get the guy in the floor, lo tiro al piso. I go with the next technique that is six protection, left, right, left. And then, oh, it's alive. Isolation, isolation. Why? Because I need, I need to adjust and cover myself for that angle. So isolation, isolation, and this, let's say this is again parting wing. Two, three, four. But if 
Party win will be one, two, three, four. I'm using three with uppercut, four. And then someone is coming from six o'clock. He's here. But no, when I get it ready for hidden, he took me and I move with third three and sixty degrees to do that image. That was the reason I said you can use a knee kick because you can hit me. One, go back. That is, like I said, out of the extension, but mostly is in contact with danger. One, two, three, four. Sebastian, oh, the club. Okay, from 12. And then, seven. Seven. And then I can salute with that. In principle, salute con eso. That can be an application, but the, the idea was of, of the form is not, you know, it's not the main objective. It's no es el objetivo principal de una forma uh, que sea una pelea contra adversarios. Como en este momento estoy tratando de poner solo un granito de arena, con que las técnicas no son solo para defender, sino que para enseñar patrones. The techniques are not only for the same himself or by himself, but to learn uh, patterns like. Someone says master key drill, some, ma, someone call it master key moves, whatever the case. Last time, third form, K3. Salutation, that's what we're showing you. Three, three, go back. One, two, three, one, two, three. Isolation, one, two, three, and then one, two, adjust, three, left. One, two, three, behind. One, two, three. Get back. Cut stance left, right, left, forward. One, two, sweep, and salutation. And then guess what? I get my point, my original point. Okay. And that was the thanks for that. Uh, dear uh, Salazar and Wendy. <laughs> Wendy, thanks. <laughs> Um, that was the idea. It's easily techniques with an easily pattern. So you can do uh, this pattern the whole day. Or whatever the case, if I don't have time, the seminar or, or at least my part is this. Learn to do this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, and you can use Last thing I, I, I will say technically is uh, you can use any of these technique changing the attack. Let's say I use party wing. And I remember now, no, no, it's the same pattern like uh, secret protection. So I will put this, this, ah, this is in the groin, but that's far, from, far away from me, tamo y lejo. I pinch in the armpit and then I strike the head. And you can do some seminar from uh, Sir uh, Master, Senior Grandmaster at Parker, using the insert with the right, with the left leg, with the left uh, uh, arm, sorry, to not break the rules. Jimmy knows about that. Don't close your line without taking something. <laughs> so I'm closing my line, but I'm not taking anything. That is the reason for an insert. But I can use this as he was, como si él estuviera aquí, aquí, and then go. So you can try to imagine. Well, ustedes pueden tratar de imaginar qué técnica estoy haciendo. Uno, dos, tres. Es para win. So again, one, two, three, four, three. Now it's that image. And I can move, move, and move, and move any technique of this form with any kind of attack. Thanks for your time. I appreciate your silence. If you have some questions, sorry if I get more time of uh, the program. <laughs> sir, uh, Jimmy, Sir, Francisco, Frank.
Someone there, someone have a question, first of all. Alguien tiene alguna pregunta? <laughs> El maestro estaba tomando café. Mose, you were talking some coffee, eh? ¿Por qué no escuchó? Eh, ¿Por qué está la patada en cinco espadas? ¿Por qué está la... ¿Ah? Ah, uh, bueno. Ok. <laughs> She was learning the phone. <laughs> um, ok. What are, the, what are the four classical basic kicks? Front kick, side kick, back kick. Well, in this form I have front kick, side kick, back kick. But there are four. Front kick, side kick, back kick, and roundhouse kick. So la razón por esa uh, Valentina es que como allá acá atrás quería completar una categoría y además tenía que ajustarme porque yo estaba trabajando con mi pie acá, fíjate. Ahí está the toe heel relationship with the Ahí está la relación del talón. Si me lanzan un puño desde ahí, yo estoy al revés. Estoy with a neutral ball, inverted neutral ball. So I will try to do that. But I can actually open him. Open him rather than open my center line. And the best way is to do like from seven or from five or from, sorry, or from eight with a roundhouse kick. So in the, in la, in la parte de atrás tengo el front kick el side kick, el back kick, lo que faltaba para completar las cuatro básicas, por lo menos del kick en set uno, que pero te lo recuerdas, era el roundhouse kick. Esa es la razón. Y gracias por la pregunta. Si alguien tiene alguien más, algo más. If someone has something else, 34 people. Anybody uh, else got any question that we yeah. can uh, answer? I think so far the seminar has been wonderful. Uh, it's such a amazing information. Uh, Probably you don't know uh, Mr. Nelson background. He's an engineer, so definitely he's gonna speak from the, the most scientific perspective about the art. So uh, what a great, great uh, exposition of uh, Show Phone 3. There's a lot of things to think about it. Um, so K3. Direction and dimension of Kempo works. So it's, so it's K3. Yes, sir. <laughs> don't what? worry, don't, don't, don't confuse with Turkey. Short tree, short K tree. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's the seminar name, like the seminar That's name. Right. And by That's the way, it. sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. Thanks for um, for your words. I forgot to say, uh, my name is Nelson Alvarez. If you pick the first letters of that, N A N I, you can put K three N A. And like this is recording. This is for my grand. Daughter, Katrina. Katrina. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> I have to say it, sir. Uh, but go ahead, Master Frank. All right. Any any other question, guys? We had we have 36 people. All oh the information is clear. What what a wonderful support. Uh, we got people uh, from all over, uh, by the way, uh, if you don't mind, uh, I'll say it real quick. We got people from, uh, from Spain, from New York, from uh, obviously here in New Jersey, from Chile, from Ecuador, from Brazil today, from Canada. Um, oh, my God, what a great support. Thank you so much, guys. It uh, means a lot to us. Um, Especially, we understand a lot of people is get a little bit tired to be online and remote. But uh, what a wonderful opportunity we have with the technology connecting people from from around the world. Uh, we got uh, Nelson right now in Chile, enjoying a beautiful summer over there in the South of America, and we are so cold here in the North. And um, yeah. what a, yeah. I mean, technology is, is amazing. So um, what can I say, man? It's unbelievable. Okay, like I said, uh, I think it, uh, it was great information, good amount of uh, um, uh, food for the talk. It's a lot of things to, to review, to, to think about it. Um, amazing, amazing. I mean, there's a lot of things sometimes we, we take it for granted about the art. That's, 
things that, you know, we see uh, sometimes things in one perspective, but uh, when somebody else point in this other dimensional zone, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's great. Um, así que nuevamente muchísimas gracias a la gente que estamos conectados con gente de Chile, de Ecuador, de Venezuela. Tenemos gente de Brasil, nuestra gente de Chile. Eh, y como lo explicaba de España también, explicaba también como la perspectiva que Nelson usa. Eh, él es un ingeniero mecánico, por lo tanto, eh, su, su visión del arte obviamente también eh, apunta mucho a la, a la parte científica, a la parte física de, del arte, así que es extraordinario, extraordinario. We got people from Mexico también, de México hoy día también, a Mauricio. Um, we got people from all over. Uh, that's yeah. awesome, awesome. I mean, Ecuador. All right, any other question, guys, before we uh, move on for the next uh, presenter? Why was this part of the class so good? Ah, oh, this my Please. big honor. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> I'm probably gonna be, I'm probably gonna be saying that for each and every part of the class. So yeah. that's gonna be three. Just, that's say awesome. that Just because he's the best. <laughs> that's because he's the best. We got people from Guatemala right now too. Yes, sir. Question. Me? Well, exactly yes. what Tommy said. All right. <laughs> Good. You got the best instructor here. I bet this. Yes. Um, I bet this class is gonna be one of my favorites. <laughs> That's Indeed, great. I have to agree. Thank you. Thank you for your support. All right. Uh, preguntas? Alguna pregunta? Any other question, guys? We can go real quick. Pregunta? Si no hay más preguntas, if there are no more questions, that was a warm up. That was great. That was great. Nice. If you allow me, uh, Baltimore to have. Yes, sir. I can introduce uh, the next exponent. Yeah. So he go can ahead. do the same with you. <laughs> it's all it's all good it's all good all right sir i get back okay. to you now get okay thanks you. thanks entonces uh para yo para que si no fuimos pasando la pelota so we are um ah oh, there's a question mendoza there's a right hand a question there mendoza sorry if i don't get Perdón, that tengo tengo problema con la cámara no la puedo abrir no sé por qué pero mucho gusto saludos desde guatemala Wow, Guatemala, gracias. Solo para saludarlos y bendiciones. Muchas bendiciones, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Guatemala. Ok, uh, guys, we will move to the second exponent today. Ah, now it's closer to me. <laughs> One big, uh, first of all, um, big friend. Um, this is my mentor, friend, master. This is the reason I know Jimmy Seabrook. I highly recommend each of you take a look at this book. I know Sir Seabrook says, ah, that book is not so good. I can write it better right now. It's far away. But look, it, it only have uh, 110 pages. I have the whole collection in front inside the the whole memory that I have a really good uh, Kempo books, but for me, this is the best one because it's written in an academic point of view. In academic way, I mean with that, the next exponent is <clears throat> not only a PhD in philosophy and, and statistic in Canada and university, but for my surprise, when I talk with first time with Master Jimmy, he says, no, 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 it's upside down. I took the campus to the university. <laughs> and that was surprised me. Since that, I have been taking some regular class with him, the more humble person that I know in campus, at least. A very funny guy, by the way. He knows a lot. And I'm just talking in terms of campus. But he is also a blue belt in Jiu Jitsu, for purple, blue, and Kung Fu, and Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Sorry, Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> I, I don't want to get a mistake. So, the, I, will, I would love to talk 
lot of stuff uh, from Sir Syrup, but since the time is coming, I live with you. Mr. Jamie, Master Jamie Siebel, my whole respect, salute. Thanks so much, Nelson. Much appreciated. All right. Okay, uh, right now, there we go, perfect. All right, I'm gonna put it in gallery view first. J just to get a, a show of hands, um, I'll see if I can see as many of you as possible. Can you raise your hand if you have done any training at all with a knife? Raise your hand. No. Okay, how about no training with a knife? Yeah. Okay, so it's pretty mixed. All right, so let me say this before we start, okay? Uh, I know there's differing perspectives, and I think differing perspectives is a good thing. That's how we learn. But I'm going to give you my honest perspective. My honest perspective is that Kempo is not a weapons-based system at all. Uh, we, we don't do Tanfa. We don't do Tsai. We don't do Sabre. Uh, we don't do uh, Long Spear. We have, you know, it goes on and on and on. We have a stick, club, uh, and, and staff for those that do the staff. And in my opinion, um, and the opinion of people who have trained in weapons-based systems, a weapons-based system means that you train with weapons consistently, but then occasionally you also do empty hand. Whereas an empty hand-based system means that you train predominantly empty hand and you also incorporate some weapons training. But a weapons-based system is one where you're consistently training with weapons, non, basically nonstop. Okay, so, you know, um, I believe that Kempo Karate, American Kempo, is taught by, you know, Ed Parker, the founder, is probably the most complete martial arts system that I have seen. Uh, however, you know, I do have a black belt under the late, great uh, Remy Priestess in Modern Arnis, and that is a weapons-based system because we also do empty hand applications, but everything is based on weaponry, weapons, predominantly uh, uh, knives and clubs. Okay, so what I'm gonna teach you today are some, uh, some drills that you can work on, memorize, practice, and wherever, wherever you're lo located across the globe, you can um, learn these and get better with weapons. Okay, um, uh, you know, I know we have form seven for black belt fourth degree, it's a lot different, you know, like I like the form a lot, but it's a lot different than how when one would typically move in in FMA, um, because it basically takes our Kempo techniques and utilizes them in more short range fighting. Okay, and then we have a long form eight, which is a great form, uh, but it's different than what we typically see in, uh, in uh, FMA. Okay, so we're going to start with um, a single knife. So if you could, everyone could get one knife, please. Okay. And if and just please ensure so everyone could hear that you um, have your mute, uh, your volume muted. Okay. So what I want everyone to do is put their right foot forward. And I want you to bring your right hand up. And I want you to take your left hand. This might be a little different. And I want you to flip it. So rather than keeping our hands up like we typically do in martial arts, where it's very easy to get your arteries cut, we're actually gonna flip it. So we're gonna expose this part of our arm, not this part, right? And what we're gonna start off with is just a basic figure eight pattern. We're gonna go inward and we're gonna go outward. We're gonna go inward and we're gonna go outward. Now, when we do that, that should be not new to anybody because that's called hooking wings, right? So we're gonna take our hooking wings pattern and we're going to incorporate a figure eight motion. We're going to go one. We're going to go two. Now, notice I don't do a big circle like this. And that'll get stopped really quick. So we're going to keep it tight to our body. And we're just going to go inward and outward. And this is going to be striking to the neck area. Inward, outward. Now, if you watch my feet, my body moves in conjunction with the knife. So you notice that I... Pivot as I strike, okay? So I don't just use my upper body and my arm. I go inward and outward. Inward and outward. So we're doing that 
figure eight pattern, that X pattern, it's basically just hooking wings, but I'm cutting the neck of the opponent. And by the way, if you look at my thumb, I put my thumb right at the back of the knife, okay? I don't do this because I'm aware that if I hit something for real, not in a kata, if I hit something for real, look, that knife can bend very easily. So I'm using this as extra backup mass right against the back of the uh, back of the knife, okay? So again, inward, outward. And we're gonna pivot our body. One, two, now pause. Now I'm gonna go and do an upward figure eight. I'm gonna strike this way and then come back. Okay, so regardless of Screma, Kali, Modern Arnis, we call these the same thing. A downward figure eight is hooking wings. An upward figure eight reverses that figure eight pattern. Okay, so let's try from the beginning. And remember, this hand, I don't wanna see it like this because that's an automatic cut to your wrist, okay? So we're gonna make ourselves tight. Look how my arms are tight. One, two, upward figure eight, three, four. And this is positioned right towards the attacker in case we need to strike again, okay? So for my Spanish friends, we go unos, dos, tres, cuatro. And again, Unos, dos, tres, cuatro. One, two, three, four. Okay, and again, one, two, three, and four. Okay, let me see everybody do that, please. Just keep doing that over and over and over again. Oh my goodness, my close, close friend, Silvio Scarcella is here. Hi, Silvio. Love that guy. Keep it going, you guys. Okay, now we're gonna take this to the next level, okay? So put your right foot forward, have your left hand this way, don't expose it. And by the way, if you take what I say and you say, okay, we're doing Filipino martial arts, we're not doing Kempo. Wrong. We're doing Kempo too. Because when I do piercing lands, for example, I don't start with my hands like this. Hey, come stab me. I start piercing lands like this. I don't want to, I don't want to expose any arteries. So I take my Filipino martial arts and I use it to make my Kempo stronger. Okay. So let's go from the beginning. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, and with this cocked up high, boom, it's gonna thrust right to the chest, okay? I can poke with it, so a poke is a hit and a pullback, but I wanna thrust, because then I'm gonna slice again, okay? So let's go from the beginning. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, okay? And again, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I'll use one of my, one of my junior black belts. He's been with me for many years. Now he's much taller than me. Okay. So basically the pattern is, I'm not going to get you for real. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, pop, five. You can see the, the striking pattern. Okay. Everybody try that again with me. So ready position. One, two, three, four, five. Now, right from here, I'm going to take this. This is going to sound a little bit vicious, but I want you to understand how the knife works. If I stab with the knife, it is possible. Heavy clothing, coat, it's like minus 20 almost in Canada right now in London. It could get stuck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice and enlarge the wound. So when I strike, it's going to come right down to my bottom left hip. Okay, so let's go one through six. One, two, three, four. It's already positioned. This is Kempo point of origin. Five and six. Okay, let's try again from the beginning. Now, remember, I don't do hooking wings like this. I'm going to put this away. I don't do hooking wings 
and keep my feet in one spot. Okay, so you shouldn't do that either. Use your legs, lower and upper body in sync. Three, four, five, pam. rotate six, okay? Let's go one through six now. Let's try. I'm going to watch you. Be beautiful. Thank you for watching me. Please just ensure that you're muted. And remember, you don't have to strike so hard, you know. Um, when you watch, uh, you know, people like Professor Nelson and uh, Master Frank Vigoro, they move so good because your body's so relaxed. So you must relax, you guys. Okay, so let's go one through six, and I'm going to add a little bit more now, okay? So we're going to go to our ready position. Okay, so we're going to go one. We're going to go two. That's the downward figure eight. Upward figure eight. Upward figure eight. See, we thrust. Now, this is nasty. Pen, I rotate. Then I come back with a backhand strike. Palm up. So I hit, uh, I hit one chest. Now I'm hitting to the other side of the chest, okay? In, in um, modern East, we would call that a seven strike, for example, if we're doing the one to 12 striking pattern. Okay, so we go one and two, three, four, five, six. Come back up seven. Now, same rule applies, guys. Look, it got stuck in the heavy coat. So watch the rotation. It comes down to the other hip. So I enlarge the wound and I strike across the body, okay? And by the way, this is also improving your Kempo because this is just taking a pattern like hooking wings and making everything tighter, okay? More succinct. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, rotate, back in, and rotate. Now we could be shuffling as we do this. Okay, we could use our Kempo push drag. For now, I'm just going to stay stationary so that you can get the uh, the arm movement. Okay, here we go. One little rotation. Two, three, four. Pop five, six. Palm up seven, and rotate. And that's eight. All right. One more time. One, two. Three, four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Okay, get this pattern because we're going to do two more and then we're going to do some double knife, but from a Kempo perspective. Okay, let me take a look. Can I say something, sir? Uh, yes, please, Nelson. Uh, Sebastian is just saying he wants to start a barbecue now. A barbecue, yeah. <laughs> I am really good at slicing steaks, Nelson. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, now guys, come back. back. All right, let's, let's finish this off with two more strikes. So again, remember, look at the knife. All right, so put your right foot forward. So we're gonna go one, we're gonna go two, we're gonna go three, we're gonna go four, we're gonna go five, we're gonna go six, we're gonna go seven, we're gonna go, now watch this circle. Boom, this is gonna go right up over top. What I don't hit with the, the butt end, I don't hit with the puño. Uh, Nelson has told me puño is the fist end. Don't do that. This is the full knife going straight down the face, okay? So let's go from the beginning. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now watch the street. Nine. Now I'm going to do a knife thrust. Okay. So you guys, the other thing, if you're advanced in Kempo, so if you are really brown or brown belt level uh, or higher in our adult curriculum, we know we have five knife techniques. We have glancing lance, reining lance, thrusting lance, and twined lance and piercing lance. But interestingly, if you take those five lance techniques and you look at the attacks, what do we have? So we have Michael Myers, 12 to six overhead. That's the standalone rating lance, right? We have glancing lance and we have uh, entwined lance. We have thrusting lance and we have piercing lance. So despite the variation in the targets, we have a lot of the same in attacks. So these, pa this pattern I'm teaching you right now should show you that there's a heck of a lot more that an attacker can do with the knife besides the Michael Myers overhead or the knife thrust, a lot more. And one might argue, yeah, that's true. But you know what? We're talking about someone on the street. So am I. These are a downward slash like this. You don't have to have much skill to know how to do that. So I'm talking the same thing as you are, but I'm saying there's a lot more in terms of knife defense than just what we have in our American Kempo curriculum. So let's go from the beginning. So we go one, two, three, four, five, slice that six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, and again, that's the whole thing. One, two, upward figure eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, overhead nine, and 10. All right, now I'm gonna do it, just watch one time. I'm not gonna go fast, but watch how I just flow and relax. I'm just gonna go average. Boom. So nice and relaxed. Let's try this, guys. One, two, three, four. Thrust that, cut that, thrust that, slice, overhead, and hit. One more time, slow, and I'm going to watch. One, use the legs. Two, get a leg workout. Three, four, five, six, seven. Enlarge the wound. Eight. Overhead nine and thrust 10. All right, let me take a look. To learn how to defend against a weapon, you must become proficient with the weapon. I will say this, this is, uh, this is my opinion, and I'm very, very vocal about it. You cannot learn weapons defense and be very good if you don't know how to use the weapon, not effectively. You must be good with the weapon. All right, now you guys, let's grab one more knife, okay? Let's grab one more knife. Okay, we're gonna try something more tricky. So you're gonna to have to follow along, okay? I'm gonna teach uh, some FMA, but I'm gonna do it, Filipino martial arts, but I'm gonna do it from a Kempo perspective, okay? So regardless if you are American Kempo, Tracy Kempo, any different, um, uh, li different lineage of Kempo, any offshoot of Kempo, one technique that is specific to Kempo is five swords. So I'm going to show you how we can take our knife. This is our double knife and incorporate 
some of our Kempo perspectives uh, to get better with the knife, but still bridging back to our original mother art, which is American Kempo, okay? So what I want you to do is, you notice I have two knives. Okay, so what we're gonna do is two slashes. We're gonna do a figure eight pattern with the right, with the right knife. One, two, remember guys, look at my thumb. And you say, oh, is it more exposed to get cut? Yeah, but you know what? Look how, look how little we're talking about. I have better backup mass. If you hit something for real, it's gone. Just like I was saying to, uh, to uh, Nelson Alvarez, when you're doing thundering uh, storm in form seven, if you do it palm down like, fun, like thundering hammers, it works perfect in the form. You'll never go wrong because you're not hitting anything. Hit a heavy bag, palm down, and that happens every single time if you hit hard. So you have to understand that weaponry is different than the empty hand, uh, but we have to <clears throat> use it similarly in our motion if we're trying to understand it from a capitalist perspective. So we're going to go slice, slice, boom, slash, slash. Now I'm going to pop a jab with my left knife. So I'm going to go slash, slash, jab, slash, slash, jab. Slash, slash, jab. We think it, a jab has to be this. No, look. Crack. I, I'll just flick. I'll just flick this right between your eyes. Boom. Just like a heel palm, like in five swords. Boom. Set you up for the next strike. Okay, so again, slash, slash, jab. Slash, slash, jab. Use your body. Slash, slash, jab. Slash, slash, jab. Slash, slash, jab. And look, guys, you should see a lot of similar, a lot of similar pattern in five swords. This is just five swords. It's all, all we're doing. So we go slash, slash, jab. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Try not to be like this, like mechanical and robotic. Slash, slash, jab. Just let your body loose. And what I do when I train on my own, guys, I don't just stay in one spot. I'll move around like I'm sparring. One, two, three. And I'll just work that pattern for like five minutes. Okay? Everybody try that on your own. Go. Move your body. Get your body moving. Yeah. And move your body if you're comfortable with that pattern. <clears throat> but like, you know, Professor Nelson or Master Frank Vigoro would say, get your, get your technique first before you worry about moving around. If you feel comfortable, do that movement. If not, stay stationary and get your, your upper body first. Beautiful. Keep working that over and over, guys. Okay, now look, you guys, look, look, look. Remember I talk about weapons training? Look what I got now. You don't have to do this. I'm just showing you this for illustrative purposes. We call this a spada yedega, sword and dagger, although I'm not using a sword, but I will in a second. So if I take that same pattern, I go, okay, slash, slash, jab. Look. Boom. I'm doing... First move of form seven, one, two, three, or five swords, whatever you want to call it, five storm. Slash, slash, jab, slash, slash, jab. Now I go, okay, wait a minute. I can, if I can do with two knives, I can do with a, with a, a club and a knife as well. Go back to the two knives and keep going, guys. Go over and over. I want everybody sweating. Nice and tired for Master Frank. Work it, work it, work it, work it. All right, you guys. Everyone, I got your heart beat up a good a little bit. Excellent. Now look something kind of cool in the history, history bank. Check this baby out. This is a machete, but it's not any machete. In May of 1990, Ed Parker came about an eight-minute drive from where I am right now at the University of Western Ontario. It's now called Western University for the Canadian Internationals. And 
As part of the Canadian Internationals, I competed and I also uh, did a demo in the evening show with Ed Parker as one of the um, uh, people watching. And this is the same machete that I use with uh, Ed Parker watching. I always make a joke that everybody clapped except for Ed Parker. So fingers crossed that was because he was in awe, not because he was bored. But all joking aside, watch. This is a, a live machete and this is a knife. Watch what I do now. Jab, slash, slash, jab. Look, same pattern and I'll move around. Boom. One, two, three, over and over. Pop, pop. Slash, slash, jab. Slash, slash, jab. Notice I don't, I'm not overextending. Just this between the eyes, a little jab. Slash, slash, jab. Slash, slash, jab. Now we're getting into some weapons training. Slash, slash, jab. Okay, go back to the two knives and then we're going to make it more hard to differ in a second. Go. Yeah. Very good, Laura from Chile. Beautiful. Nice, Victoria Brock. Good, Rodrigo. Good, Silvio. Very nice, Juan. Okay, you guys, we're going to take this to a whole new level, okay? This is going to get a little tricky, so you got to follow along, but I know you can do it. All right? We've got our knives. Sharp part, not sharp part. Okay, so here we go from the beginning. Okay, so we're going to go slash, slash, jab. Now I'm going to come underneath, straight up the center line, and then I'm going to cut the wrist with that same knife. And by the way, that's just five swords, okay? So let's try this again. We're going to go one, two, three. Come up the center line. This is over to my left shoulder and cut that wrist. Okay, so that's move four and five. One, two, jab that, come up with the thrust, and we cut. Okay, again, one, two, three, four, five. Look at this, guys, look. Almost identical. Almost identical. It doesn't have to be different stuff. Here we go. One, two, three. Come up the center line and cut that wrist. So maybe they grab. Maybe they try to stop. It. Oh, I'm just going to slice the wrist. Okay. And again, one, two, three. Come up the center line four. Cut that five. Okay. One more time. Use the legs, lower and upper body, not just with knives, with Kempo. All right. One, two, three. Four and five. Okay, try it to there, guys. Go for it. Totally got it. You totally got it. Awesome. So for me, you guys, I don't care about what's flashy. I just like what's practical. To me, yeah, this is my perspective and only my perspective. And, you know, um, I'm, I give it to my students. And that is martial arts is for self-defense. My focus is self-defense, not sport. Okay, so I, I want to eliminate any flash and just get right at the source when we do this. Okay, we're going to add to this, you guys. We're going to do a little bit of reversing mace backwards, okay, uh, other side. So start like this. Okay, so remember, look at, look, at my, look at my thumbs. All right, here we go. So we go slash, slash, jab. Thrust as you come up the center line, cut that wrist. Now, my left 
knife, ding, is going to thrust over top. I'm going to come back with the thrust, and then I, I pop the jab again. Okay? So the motion was this. Left, right, left, which, wait a minute, would be reversing mace, but on the other side, okay? So we're just doing reversing mace flips. Okay, so let's try this from the beginning. We start with Kempo Karate 101, five swords. One, two, three, four, cut that, come over top with the thrust, thrust again, and pop the jab. My right knife is down by my hip. I'm exaggerating a bit so you can see my motion. Okay, so we'll do it on this angle. Here we go. One, two, three. Come up the center line, four. Cut that. Thrust as I come around. Come with the backhand thrust and pop another jab, okay? And I'll do it on this angle. Here we go. So use your lower and upper body. Slash, slash, jab. Straight up the center line. Cut that wrist. Come around left, right, and pop another jab. Okay, towards you. One, two, three, four. Cut that thrust over top. Add another thrust and pop that jab out. All right, we're almost done. The sequence I'm going to show you. So get that really good, guys. Go for it. Don't be mechanical. Let your arm be loose. Ivan, love it. Well done, Ivan. Ivan, I can't imagine how cold it is in Ottawa today. Oh, I'm so desperate for a walk, but it's too cold. Okay, you guys, let, let, how about we see this on a live body, okay? And um, I'll get my live machetes out for it. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll use my buddy Scott, junior black belt. And he is good. He's like a heck of a fighter. Okay. So we got Scott here. Scott, just stay still for us, okay? Okay. So here's, here's the pattern, guys. I'm going to go slow. So I'm going to go slice, slash, jab okay watch it again slash slash jab come up the center line cut the wrist come over top and pop another jab out okay we're going to try this again this is pretty nasty one two pop that jab come up the center line cut the wrist come all, all the way around and pop another jab and now guys this <clears throat> is coming next uh, a forward slash upward slash like a figure eight Okay, so let's try this from the beginning, you guys. Let's do this. Really need to focus, okay? Here we go. Slash, slash, jab. Come up the center line. Cut that wrist. Come over top with the left and the right. Pop another jab. Now watch this shot. Look. Wham. Straight up the body. Straight down and pop another jab. So I went up, back down. Hey. I want to hit you one more time with my left jab, but I'm going to make it a knife strike instead. Okay, so here we go from the beginning. Slash, slash, jab. Thrust up the center line. Cut that. Thrust, thrust, pop another jab. Slash, slash, and jab. And we're right back to where we started again. Here we go. One, two, three. It's 11 counts. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, because we know in Kempo, you know, we hit someone going this way, they're coming towards us. So as they come forward, hey, buddy, you're going to get one more jab before you get too close. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. Now, I'm not going to go fast, but I'm going to show you what it looks like just without stopping, okay? Just watch the flow. Boom. I'll do it one more time. 
There it is. Okay, so let's try slow. One, two, three. Here comes five swords. Boom. Strike that. Reversing mace on the other side. Come up the body. Back down and pop a jab. And we can move around as we do it. I'll do it on this angle. Do it together, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, that's a tricky one. I'm going to watch. Okay, most of you have it. I'm going to turn my back. So don't worry about my voice if you can't hear me well, just to make sure that you've got the right angles, okay? So I'm going to turn my back for this one. All right, here we, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One more. I'll go slow. One, two, three. Thrust that, cut, thrust, thrust, backhand, slash up, slash down, pop the jab. All right, let me see. Now we're getting into some, some real weapons training here. Uh-huh. All of you can take this and practice it forever. You got it. Yeah. And you have to understand, you guys, the counter argument to any FMA is why spend all of your time weapons training when you could be empty handed, which is more common. Hey, I'm going to raise both hands. I agree with that. But hold on to that thought. If you can get better at your weapons training, like your club and your, your knife, you're going to get a lot better with your empty hand because you're not going to do wasted motion. Everything is going to be better in Kempo. It's not even close. Keep going. Okay. So let's review everything we've done. Then I'll do one more drill to 12 o'clock and, uh, and then Master Frank is going to take over. Okay. But let's review everything we've done to make sure it wasn't just a good class and you won't, you won't remember it. Okay. So let's try from the beginning. Let's do single knife. The single knife. We're going to go slow, okay? All right. Remember, left hand, not like this. So this is my opinion. I'm going to, I'm going to give it. If you do your knife techniques in Kempo with your hands like this, please consider doing this for safety, okay? Please, because this is dangerous. Hands in. Don't expose your arteries. Okay. Single knife. Here we go. One. Two, three, four. Thrust that slash. Thrust, slash, over top, thrust. That's a lot. Let's try this again slow, okay? Here we go. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Okay, again, one, two, downward figure eight, upward figure eight, three, four, thrust that, five, six, palm up seven, slash that eight, over top nine, and make your straight. Okay, try it on your own, guys, go. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, terrific. Amazing, well done, well done, well done. Okay, you guys, let's review the double knife, okay? Get two knives in your hands, okay? Here we go. Again, you have a choice after the seminar, right? Um, don't practice or practice. I, if you practice this drill, you'll have it. Okay, here we go from the beginning. 
slash slash jab. Thrust that, cut the wrist, come around with the thrust, a backhand, another thrust. Look, 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 look at the travel I got for this. Bam! Come up with the slash, back down and pop another jab, okay? So everything is point of origin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Try it, you guys. We got it. Okay, last couple drills and we're done. Okay, um, this is a standard striking pattern in Filipino martial arts, okay? It goes by the, the, the name Heaven Six because the, the points of the clubs or the knives uh, uh, shoot towards the heavens, okay? So we're gonna kind of start like this and we're gonna go strike one, strike two, Strike three, okay? So I'm going right, left, right. Let's try this again. So we're gonna go one, two, three. Now, this is tricky for some people. This right knife goes underneath and I do the other side. Four, five, six, okay? So we're gonna try it again. There's the heaven six. So we go one, you notice the tip or the point is up, two, Three. If it helps, do a little pose. That'll help you remember. The knife goes underneath. Four, five, six. Yeah, so this is a heaven six with the knives. Other side, put this underneath. We don't have to. We can just flow into it. But while you're learning, it helps if you dip this underneath. So we go one, two, three. Dip that. Four, five, six. And again. One, all hitting high, two, three, four, five, six. So the pattern, uh, Scott, the pattern would be this. Watch the six pattern. Watch the six pattern. I would go one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, try that one, guys. Go for it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now, so we're going to do the exact same pattern, except that um, I'm going to do an, uh, an ice pick grip with this. And it's going to be against the forearm. Look at the forearm. Look how I can cut. So let's try the same thing. We're going to go strike, but now hit with the forearm means to say we're cutting. Three, four, five, six. So to do nothing changes, just the grip of my left knife, four, five, six. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. One, two, three, four, five, six. Try that, go. Uh-huh. So this is, this is contingent on range. We got to be close enough to be able to hit with this. Okay, so we got to be close. Yep. Okay, last one and we're done. I'm just going to do a little slight modification. So we're going to do the ice pick grip with the left, other hand up with the right. This time I go one, never do this. But I hit with the point. Look, three also known as long form eight, four, five, six. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. One, two, three, look at the difference. Four, five, six, just like form eight if you've seen it in Kempo. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Try it, guys, and then it'll be done. Yeah, very nice. Lindsay Wiley. <laughs> Just kidding, Evan. Thank you, um, Master Taylor. Thank you. Okay, time. Okay, so I threw a lot of a lot of knife at you today, guys. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of it was a lot easier than other, but I think those are really three drills: the single knife and the two double. That I think you can practice and get. Like to me, this is my way of learning. And you know, when I think of my my university courses, where I had to cram everything, and even if I got a good grade and I got an A, but then I'm like two weeks later, I forget it all. Like we've all had that right in college, or university or school. The, the courses I learned the most is where I had to get heavily involved. So when I think of, you know, courses where I had to write an essay and stuff, I'm like, man, I remember that. So likewise in martial arts, you have a choice. You can practice this and get good at it or leave it. But I highly recommend uh, that you practice it. One little quick story, and then I'm going to pass you on to Master Frank. Many, many years ago, uh, it wasn't in Kempo when I was training um, also in Kempo, I was training in Kung Fu by someone local, Master Paul Chow. He, he said to me, he said, Jamie, I was a black belt with him. He said, uh, I'm going to teach you a form that is usually only taught um, father to son. I'm like, okay. And he taught me this special form. It was the plum flower fist. And, you know, I'm young. You know, it was like early 90s at the time. And, uh, you know, I practiced a little bit. But he didn't review it with me after he taught it to me. And then about six months later, he says, Jamie, everyone go sit down. I want you to show everybody the plum flower fist. And I hadn't practiced much. And I said, oh, you know, sorry. Sorry, Master Chow. I, I forget it. And you know what he said to me? Never again will I teach you a specialized form because you didn't do anything with it. And you can think that's a bad instructor. But that was one of my best lessons ever. He said, you'll never learn this form again. And he never taught it to me. So from that point forward, anything that was passed on to me, uh, Master Frank, Professor Nelson today, anything, I am going to practice it. You can bank on it because I value what I do in martial arts so much. And I value the knowledge base of different people. And I practice. And I want you guys to try to do the same Thank you, you guys. That was a true, truly an honor. And uh, I'm going to pass you on to uh, to uh, my good friend, one of the best, in my opinion, in the world in Kempo, Master Frank Vigoro. Thanks, sir. Tommy has a question, I think. Tommy? Sure, go ahead, Tommy. Why was this part of the class so good? Thank you, my yeah. friend. Uh, did, 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 did Professor Nelson tell you to say that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at the beginning of the class. Your, che your check is in the mail, my friend. Yay. Question, can I get trouble because it's three classes? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let, you know, how about, you know, guys, if you have any questions at the end, we'll save them. Because I don't want to, I don't want to bump into Master Frank's time. Okay. So maybe then if you have any questions at the end, I'm, I'll be, uh, you know, honored to, uh, to answer them. But let me pass you on to, uh. Uh, my dear friend, again, one of the best in Kempo, in my opinion, on the globe, uh, Master Frank Vigoro. I agree. Master Francisco, está por ahí? Master Frank. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Nelson? Yeah, yeah. The audio is going? Very good. All right. So let me. Great <laughs> seminar. Jamie, that was unbelievable. Very great. Great, thank great. You, very thank good. you, my friend. Great, brother. Very good. All right, Mr. Pasagla is there. Can't believe it, sir. Us. Mr. Pasagla is so quiet. All right, is it coffee time? <laughs> you never can start without the coffee. All right, um, I'm gonna use my uh, student, the new generation. It's funny because it might happen to you uh, as an instructor, you involve in information. And as an instructor, obviously uh, you got seasons and you got, uh, you know, times that you know, you are obviously, and you teaching involve as well. So every time I got my old generation of black belts that today I got, you know, we give it such a great influence to our kids. We got lawyers, we got cops, we got people that they're doing something very significant things in their life. 
And when the, all my old students come into uh, to the lesson or come into the studio again, and they feel like, oh my God, Sensei, everything looks so different. You know, we used to do a big circle. We used to do this and that. What happened? We don't do that way anymore. And and I'm saying that it's not because we're changing things. It's because obviously you as an instructor and you are, you involve as well. That's happened with the new generation. Um, uh, when my old guys coming back and, you know, we do camp one stuff and they see them, it's like, is the 2022 a uh, new car? It's the same four, but it's the new, it's the new one. So obviously the information is always there, it's involved. And that's what the beauty about Campo that never uh, get stuck, always flow. And it's so many way to do um, uh, the same teaching and the same information. So I wanna share with you, hi Mia. So I wanna, I want to share with you uh, some of the stuff that works for me uh, all these years. And I hope it really works for you as well. And I hope that uh, this information uh, get a good place in your hands. And obviously, because it's one hour, it's not much time we do, we have. But uh, I'm going to try to do my best, given the key, a master key of my own uh, teaching, my own uh, way that I training. Um, I always said to my students and people, I break and then remake it. I took the whole art and I break it and I remake it again in a very, um, I won't say a practical way because it will be uh, unfair for other uh, campo colleagues, but it's definitely, it's information that really works for my type and I hope works for you type as well. So I want to, I'm very open to share what I works for me, what I, I training in my personal um time and I share with my students as well. So I hope it works for you. And here I am. My name is Frank. I like Frank because it's short. Frank Biguru. Uh, but my, my full name is Francisco Alejandro. So that's that's kind of like extremely long. So short Frank and uh, we're here based in New Jersey. Um, I'm native from Chile as well, South America. And when we say South, for many of our people here in the state, South is like Mexico all the way down. But for us, South is South. So we are truly in the South of America. We are very near to Patagonia. And that's actually I born in, in, in a very uh, close uh, city, which is not far from the Patagonia. So where I born, it's pretty much the sidekick of Alaska. So the weather is very extreme. Summertime is a month. if December, January is the summertime. If we got some good summer, but it's very, very, very tough weather. Um, I'm from all the way from the south, and I live here in New Jersey. This is going to be my 31 year living here in New Jersey. I came when I was young, when I was 20, and uh, I God gave me the strength to to settle here and based in New Jersey. And I love this country. I love this town, and I love. America, God bless America, give us opportunity to start all over again. And I love this message. Um, so nothing, just I want to say thank you, you guys, my uh, wonderful brother, Nelson, uh, Jamie, thank you so much, brother, for, for being here with us and, and, and give me this opportunity to share the flow with you guys. Um, and nothing, just I want to say once again, thank God. We can say so much about us, and sometimes that's the problem with uh, martial arts. Sometimes we take so much credit for what we do, and uh, because it's very personal uh, development, and we take credit a lot for what we do. But ultimately, it's because God, He's good, He's good, He gives us the strength. Uh, it's not a coincidence that you don't born in another place in the world, it's not a coincidence that you don't born in a different type of body. God is good, God is good. It's not a concept. It's it's made by the Lord. So we honor God and everything we do and everything we pursue. And um, just I want to give it that that time to the Lord to give me another another opportunity in my life. And um, I want to say thank to Him for His mercy. I was very sick, by the way, for two weeks. I'm sure it was COVID, but I'm back. God is good. God is good every time. God is good. So I can't stop to say how much I love the Lord and Jesus for the ultimate sacrifice. So I give it this time to the Lord. 
And I want to share myself with you. I'm going to open my heart, my mind, and I hope you guys enjoy my class. I love you guys. Thank you so much. So I'm going to go here and there, back and forth in Spanish. So for our uh, brothers in South America as well. So everybody kind of like connected with the information. All right. We're ready. So the last sip of coffee before we start. <laughs> All right, vamos. Aquí está Santiago, new generation. My little Santiago really helped in my classes. Santiago is from Colombia, but he moved here many years now. And um, he's my, my student, uh, one of my top guys. He really helped a lot with the students and uh, he's such a good role model for the new generation coming up. Um, Nothing, just uh, I want to share something that I've been doing for a long time now, uh, breaking and remaking in, in uh, different uh, perspective about the art. And, and one time in my life, I said, what's truly Campo? I said, probably you asked that question many, many times and you ask it to yourself, what's truly Campo? Why is Campo different from many other arts? Why we are different? And, and, um, and I asked, you know, I won't say I test in the art, but it just, I wanna, I question so much about many things about the art. And uh, what I ultimately uh, found out was um, the, the reach of the concept and principle and scientific um, element that Kempo offered to practitioners. And, uh, but we gotta, we gotta be careful because there's so much there that sometimes we miss the, the understanding and the essence of the art. And I wanna give you four that I call the functional statement of Kempo. That is how I call this, the functional statement of Kempo, que sería como los cuatro principios fundamentales, funcionales, estableciendo el arte del Kempo. So just I wanna bring it to you, both uh, um, four elements that it really works for me and take me the art to, um, to the very incredible uh, level and understanding about the art, all right? There's a, we got so much to understand that um, in Kempo, we tend to study motion and direction, um, uh, carry a completion and so on, which is wonderful. That's the first part of understanding the art, all right? But now I wanna focus and concentrate more into the, um, the ability element in the art. All right. Um, one thing is understanding the art, how the function or, or the structure of the art works and, um, and the, the, the system work and something else is know how to use it. All right, so there are two things. We got wonderful system, but a very poor training method. That is one of the things that Campbell is it's missing. Because we're using a lot other art to uh, make it work, the system. So we use for many years karate as the element to make it work the system. But on the system, if you really ultimate dig it in, you will find that that system got a really interesting method that make it work in a very, very original and specific way. So I want to share what works for me, and I call the functional statement of Kempo, which is no more than four uh, principle of motion uh, that uh, there's nothing new because you heard all the time. There's very uh, up there, but sometimes we don't use it much. Exist, people mention. Sometimes we do here and there, but we don't use as a whole. So the first one, the first functional statement, obviously is establish your good foundation. So a body alignment, when we said establish foundation, you said, what a suck is that? Well, pretty much be in a good alignment, good in a good balance, be able to uh, bounce and be able to travel from point to point, from position to position, to um, move and, 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 and second, to reestablish yourself when you need it again in order to flow where you strike, which in Kempo we call the harmony of motion. So um, 
the hormone element, it's, it's, it's very attached with your body alignment. So that's number one, all right? We're going to discover as we progress in, in, in the class today. And the second element for me uh, as the functional statement of Kempo is the contour body, which I, I found a new world of development in my own art. Uh, contour body is the way not just using your opponent as, as his um, weapons to travel to targets, but also you can use your own and using something that we call here this uh, dimensional extension of the space, which pretty much you travel. We got one good one that we use for block and so one, for example, we got the outer ring theory, the quadrant zones. We got a lot of elements that we we use it as a way to travel with our uh, weapon to not overextend ourselves. So the the second one here is is contour body. So pretty much when I do a strike, we, we learn in the lace sword, right? So I'm gonna have uh, Santiago here, and I'm gonna show you real quick. And we're gonna move on because we got a lot of good information to share with you today, guys. But it's something like uh, we move here, Santiago. So we so this is this is one of the things. For example, when we do uh, the instead of hammering from here, obviously we don't. That's going to be the second concept, uh, the third concept. It's uh, it's using the weapon to to travel to the to the target, right? All right. So we don't move up here to um, descending, right? You're using the arm to travel. So and then from there you might find different other uh, targets and weapon. So the concept of aiming, for example, which we're gonna talk later and so on. So contour, it's very fascinating um, element in the art that sometimes in Campo we missing a lot. And I said we, because we tend to going back again in the, in the karate method. The third one, it's called a uh, point of origin. So basically what it is, it's, you um, you function where you establish the last position of your weapon, all right? What I mean by that, it's um, if, if in my hand is here, for example, I'm gonna take the lace sword, just a, a quick a reference, and he throw the punch or he's coming with the grab, right? Either or, when the object's coming, the subject's coming to the object here, we tend to do this, all right? So look at how we connected. So we got a very straight line to the point with a slow motion here, all right? Because I wanna do the training of hammering. But there's another way to do the same type of method hammering by not just coming up and losing the position where you establish your hand and you place your hand in the last, in, in the last move. So if my hand is here, go for it. Bam! And then I move from there. So I bounce it because over here, I got three point of contact. I got one, two, three. See? So I got a really perfect triangle. So I'm going to take a tail here. I don't know if you guys see. What it is, it's this, this what you have. You got beautiful three point of contact. When we do hammer up here, we lose everything. Okay? So because we actually, we are so rush at the speed and, and found the target instead of connecting and flow in the perimeter of action and the pattern of action. We're missing a lot. Once again, because we've been doing training and the whole system and the whole method, which is karate, all right? Nothing against karate, I love it, but this is not karate. We dress with karate belt, we dress with karate uniform, but this is not karate. Kempo, it's not, Karate. Imagine if you said the Filipino martial arts karate or Kung Fu is karate. From my guys, not karate. Sistema is not karate. We dress like karate, but we're not karate. All right. As much as you discover the art, you will find out this has nothing to do with karate. Nothing at all. We use elements, but we're not karate. And when we say, no, this is some type of karate, wrong, wrong. wrong. We, we're, I'm talking over here. We're not talking, I'm not giving information for uh, technical emotion. I'm talking about for engineer emotion. We are in different level, different perspective of the art. 
And that's what I want to share with you. The four element is called the opposite and reverse. And starting the opposite reverse, you will have you will discover a new era in the art. All right. We talk so much about it, but we don't use it sometimes. All right. We don't know how to deal and handle and 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 found exactly what this reverse and opposite really uh, works in the art. Uh, I met uh, uh, Mr. Parker's wife before she passed away. And actually, she said in the book as well. Um, that was on 97, I believe. I went on lady. She opened her house. Her house was like a museum. And one of the things she was talking, you know, so many things that, you know, I asked so many questions. Not quite a question that I have today, but some of the questions, you know, typical, you know, fact about the art and about Parker and, and so on. But one of the things that she said was uh, one of the last elements that Mr. Park, uh, my husband uh, added in, in the system was opposite and reverse. And obviously opposite and reverse create an amazing dynamic in the art, all right? It's make it very unique because make you flow from one target to one direction, from one location to the other. It's, that's why Kempo is Kempo have the 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 element of rapid fire, and you go from one, you move all over the place in a different in a in a, in a good timing. You can get a different location, different targets. It's amazing. So um, when we set up a reverse, we got things. For example, the the reverse of this action, it's over here, all right? So that means if he throw over here, prah, I can have a, a location, someone is located behind me, and I can strike. So the first or the second half of your initial move got in the same pattern, in the same um, uh, uh, direction, you got the opposite, the reverse of the first uh, action. So the reverse for this one, it's up here. So if I go here, pop, I can hit someone there. And then we got the, the opposite. That's a very uh, easy way to explain. It. And the, the opposite is it's across the street from, from the target. So we'll be, if I got over here, and there's a tag attack, wow. So I got things, for example, like a fatal deviation, things like that. So creating, and not just blocking wise, you can do as a striking wise as well. So it's very fascinating how American Kempo, the structure Y function, and those elements need to exist in your particular art, all right? You don't wor work this in separate. Uh, this element works in a whole. So we got Body alignment, contour body, point of origin, and opposite and reverse. Along with number five, that we don't care about the speed because the speed that just happened, it's timing. When you put the element in the right place, in the right context, the speed it will happen, right? It's not just something that that you need to rush to be first. It just, it just happened, all right? I was teaching a seminar and, and I always share this with, you know, with my students. I, I was here, uh, I was teaching a, a seminar in, in Honduras. And, and, and I was teaching the seminar and it was a, behind me was a table. So I took my bottle of water and I, and I call uh, one of the students very near, close to me, and I place the water right in the edge of the table. So when I place it there, I try to balance right in the edge, and I let the bottle go. I soon I let it go, guess what? The bottle fell. So when it was falling down, this guy, cut the bottle of water in his hand. And I said, well, you're very fast. And he goes to me, uh, well, I guess that is timing. 
So you connect the element and the, the same specific time, speed, dimension, function, and structure. It just happened, all right? You don't think about speed. When you put the element in the right perspective and, and very well aligned, the speed element will happen, all right? So we wanna be effective. We don't wanna be just be fast or speed it. Pretty much we, we were thinking it's anticipating before the other person get there. So I wanna be effective. I don't, I don't wanna be just fast just because. I don't wanna impress. I wanna be effective. I wanna be practical. And I wanna really place my weapon in the right Okay, so I need precision every time I use it, this element. So that's number five, which is along with the force uh, functional statement. All right. So over this, we're going to start working now on techniques. I got a few techniques I, I, I save it uh, for you guys today. I want to share with you. I'm not pretending here to teach you anything. Just I want to share this information. I want to just locate it in your mind. I want to wake up that temple uh, mind inside you. And I know you got a lot of questions because uh, in, in my training in the past, you know, it happened the same time to me training with good. I mean, I was so blessed to train with such a great martial artist, great temple is, you know, uh, good people that guide me in, 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 in the journey of, of Campo. And, um, I want to grasp all this information all this year, and I want to share this with you today. So the first one, I, I, I got few. And one of the things, for example, talking about, uh, I think we're going to move back so you can see, that's it. Now we're talking. I think one of the things that, that I, I want to share with you, it's uh, when you locate it in your hand, you tend to, let's say, for example, you place over here, and you do a, a dangle block. What you do, you bring it up. So the, the old concept of uh, uh, loaded, take away from your mind, all right? Take away the concept loaded. We do, but not the way we was taught, all right? We loaded, absolutely. This hand is already loaded when I'm here. Santiago is coming with a front kick, right? He's coming. And I just bring it down. So I'm not thinking to do this, see? All right, the reason is because when he's coming, my power is this foot over here, which is creating two things, rotational force and the gravity. So I'm using the marriage. I, I marriage, dun, 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 I put the ring with the gravity. So marriage is gravity pretty much is a um, fusion between your weight and this, the gravity here. All right, so you marry with that. So what happened here when he does the kick, I don't need to do this. You're ready and powered by moving this leg back. So my right is connecting with my right over here. So I'm using one side of my body to connect them both. So this hand got a back of mass over here in my heel, all right? I don't know if you guys see this, pop and back again, back again. All right, so this motion here, it's empower my hand when I need it. So I don't need to elevate it and bring it down when it's already got a sort of power by using the gravity, all right? And rotation, this is so cool. Every time you're using any, the other two working synchronized. The other two work in synchronized every time. So when you have the, the gravity, obviously you got a back of mass as well, and you got a what? And rotating. It's a habit, right? So we're not robot, we move one piece of that. So we go over here. So I go one, bam, all right? So that allow me when he throw the punch, the hand is already there. So he's gonna do the punch, bam, and I break it. So I bring it up, bam, and I break it. Now. A little, little hop over here when he does. 
bam, and that little hop is creating one of the concepts that our instructor, such a great master, Tatum. Tatum always said about, we synchronize the, and we add in together uh, vibration, all right? So <clears throat> I transfer my vibration from here to here. And by do this, bang, I just little hop. So whatever happened down here affected up here. So I'm working my reverse motion in a vertical fashion. And I did in a vertical fashion here. And what happened here? I did horizontal. Bam! Oh my God, this is so cool. So vamos aquí. So tenemos esto. Bam! So when I come with the second one, and I break it, and then I can use it, that straight diagonal line. So my body is moving synchronized. I step forward here to close knee forward ball. The palm heel crossing over. I want to show you from this point over here so you can see. When I disentangle the break, I snap in the elbow. I'm going to show that part. I want you guys stepping. So whatever is happening with my left or my right is empowered with my left. All right, so you don't need to move him back in order to strike. Just flow in your line, using the power of your own mobility. Bop, I pass over. So when I pass over, I'm gonna be over here so you can see in the back. And, it's, and I pass him over such a nice way that I can anchor my knee and I do a really nice kneel stance because it's a combination between close and wide kneel. I kneel down and my opponent target. So over here, I told you before, we got a nice triangle that everything is connected. So the, the, the jaw over here, it's in the same line as your opponent leg and actually tie um, back of the knee, I'm sorry. So we got this point over here, I'm doing nice kneel stance. So I archer my opponent. All right, so I'm not just doing this, so I bring him to me. I archer his back and I barrel wham, back again. So when he's, it's lowing down, it's when I use him that power back to me or bah, back to him in this case. Now, the next part of this technique over here, obviously, is checking the shoulder blade bam, to strike diagonally. So we don't go in a vertical here. We go diagonally because this is where the structure of your, where your body is, your diagonally to your opponent. Bam! So I do the back knuckle pop. And obviously I push in over here, I thrust in and I poke in. You're not gonna find another art like Kempo. There are three things happens in one. That's why you training, it needs to be different. You got your cover, Many dimensions, many targets as one. Long form four is a good example of that. Beside everything else, all the information that the form offered to you, the main information that long form four offered to the students, it's handling multiple attacks, not multiple attackers. Your multiple attacks two and different um, targets. As you hit and poke in the eye, you're taking the arm, you're kicking the groin, and you're doing settle with the elbow. There's so many things happens at one. So when I got over here, Santiago, and I do the back knuckle, right? That's what we did, pop. Now I push and I poke it. And when I do that, pop, I almost cross in diagonally. Bam. I, I slide in, so don't push in forward. Just slide in, it's, it's, a, it's a deflecting type of action. So it's like, I'm here, look at my hand, I'm not doing this. That's another typical mistake. And you see in the forms, you see in the forms. Okay, my question, your hand was here. What the hell is doing here? Your center line is compromised and never moved. In order to develop this, we need a new training method. 
All right, so watch again. I have him here. All right, now if I striking, this is what happened most of the time. You do this, right or wrong, we'll have that, right? That's the way I learned to. We all learn like that. Now, I want you to synchronize and close the gap and give it now the place how important your stances, your body maneuver, your foot maneuver, and the way you use the body given the important to you training, not to your weapon, all right? So if I'm here, for example, see? When? All right, I pass over, I didn't move here. If it's Santiago, see that, obviously he's getting the hit away in the leg, yes. He get caught on the leg, but he see the hand, so he's gonna do something. Definitely. As much fast I go, he can think, he can do. And probably your opponent is fast and stronger than you. So I don't want to give him any opportunity to my opponent. So my hand is over here and I travel there. I don't know if you guys see, it's a very small circle over here. It's not this orbit. It's a very small circle over here and I use it and I pass it. Because the front crossover, the twist, the rotational force given already something to work with. Bam! And I poke it and I can break over here, pop, and take my opponent down, right? So you don't have to make it this because you see once again, I pass and right the throw, wham, pop. And I can break it. So when I kick in right in the, in the leg, I mean, um, on the, on the face, on the head, I got pop in aiming. So it, I can kick in. Can we move back so they can see? Thank you, Santiago. Get down. So when you guys go here, so the arm is there, pop. You break it, pop, and kick it. So you got two things that happen. Your middle case and your low case happen in the action figure. All right? So once again, I want to work with, with you guys. Something I bought, um, I've got to mention about the breaking, the, the racing of your, the block, which created a really deflecting angle over here, which is no more than this. So instead of parry this way, I want you guys parry diagonally, right? That's the way we do in Kempo. We don't do like that because if, you, if I do this way, it's a gap between his weapon and mine. All right, so how I can just cut it immediately by using this Kempo way to block. That's the way in Kempo we block, all right? But do they teach us this? All right, so when you train it like that, it's no different between karate and Kempo, all right? So we gotta be careful with those things. You know, people think oh, it's just Mr. Vigoro like that. No, this is Kempo, all right? We got so much, so many concepts, so many principles to do this. I mean, we got so much technology in the art that are going back again in your old way of training. We got so much that you can really develop. People, they don't want to do because this is take another way to train. It's just learn another art, all right? And obviously, not many people is going to be willing to, you know, training in this direction because this is really developed new abilities, right? You're educating your body with a new type of training and give it a new way to react, all right? So we got over here. So I got Santiago here. So when I did, uh, do the kick Santiago's out. So we got my way here, but bam, see, I, I bring it up and I'm not doing this. I don't know if you guys saw the pop. So I put the other hand to check, and when I do this, and both coming, one coming up and one coming down, it's creating a really cool leverage pop, kind of like you guys did in long kimono, right? So we never actually did in long kimono something like this, all right? It's so a grab over here, pop, it's deflected. It's almost like a throw a punch. So because Kempo is a striking art, and from the striking perspective, you can take 
that dimension, the global dimension of the art that could be for manipulation, group and weapons, mass attack, kicking that we're gonna see in a minute, and striking in different type of um, ranges as well. So when we got Santiago over here, I pass him over and I, I really deflect him once again. I'm not showing Santiago. Don't show the money. Give it the money. All right. Pass pop. And obviously anchor over here. And I borrow that. Pop. So he collapsing in my hand. I don't push my hand. He collapsing in my hands. Check in the back. No, go pop. Come over here, check in. Pop. One. And make a small circle. See? And contour body. So I try poking the eye and track over here. We did this in long, remember you guys, long two? In long two, we did thrusting sweep, which is the third kick in long two. Remember you got what? Long front two is the first, is the form that it's, it's a global form because it's adding three previous form and we recap the whole information you learn show from one, long one, show from two, and finally long two, you recap the whole information in one single form. So this is the first time talking, speaking in forms that you are in a kick. This is the first time you kick. You didn't have a kick in long for one. You didn't have a kick in short for one. You didn't have a kick in short for two, but here we are in the first time a kick. So we got three kicks. The first one is side, the second one is front, and the third one along two is thrust and sweep. It's not just a front crossover. So, and then we got overhead punch, right? We got the uppercut and forearm check, and we got this nice track poking the eye. So one is front of tie, and you got foot inside and you track it back and forth. So what happened in long form two, which I'm, I'm not gonna, we don't have time to go over in long two right now, but you do over here in dancer down. So I strike Santel over here, see? So what is that? Just like long form two, I track. So you don't need to do this big circle. When the target's there, pop and you cut it diagonally. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So not quite pushing forward or to the side and so, you know, make this huge orbit when you target is diagonally to you, pop. It's a very short motion. See, you see that? Wow. Oh, and I can break over here, clap. And elbow, bam, and turn and break. So when I, when I release is because I break it and back around the throw. Don't make the big circle easy again, all right? So that one give it this, not to teach you the form, but I give you an element that you use in your tempo. I'm gonna move farther now and I'm gonna take the next technique. Uh, we got a destructive kneel. But before destructing Neil, if you guys want to follow me real quick, we'll be, we, we'll be unfair if I don't share the whole thing with you and move into the next one. All right. So I'm going to put um, everybody. Let me change my view so we can see each other. Oh my God, there's so many people. When people see something like that, they come into you and say, if these people doesn't have a life on Saturday, yeah, this is our life. We love this. We love this. Okay, so vamos a hacerlo otra vez. Si fija como estoy cerrando los ángulos, no lo estoy ampliando, lo estoy cerrando en todo tiempo para evitar que mi oponente lo pueda ver. Eso right? es una, una cosa fundamental en este tipo de ejercicio. Lo voy a hacer con ustedes si me siguen. If we go all together, so I show you and share this way 
If it works for you, once again, the element is what you guys need, right? Not my way, because my way doesn't work for you. But the element, it works for you, all right? It's something more tangible, something that you can take and carry with you and use it in your campo, all right? It's not my way. My way works for me. But your way works for you type. And you know your way, all right? So add in the element and you own way and you particular way, right? So, me siguen. Entonces, estamos aquí. Si todos me siguen. Entonces, esta es la posición. La primera, bájala. Y hasta el chequeo. No lo abras. ¿Sí? No esto. We learn all. Remember, guys? We all learn this. How many will learn like that? Yeah, we all learn like that. Yes. All right. Because they teach us karate. Once again. So you put your hand over here and you're already checking. And you say, well, 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 but you don't, have, you don't have power there. Yeah, we do. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes, we do. We have a lot, enough power. So we come in over here and counter. Matter of fact, let me show you. Let me focus here. We're going to focus more here in the left hand. What's going on with the left hand here, guys? So when the punch is coming here, after the kick comes up, the kick is coming. This hand is already cover and protecting my center line. There's something I think you're gonna put up once again to uh, spotlight so everybody can see better. I don't want you guys miss this stuff. It's not, once again, it's not about the technique. It's about the, the element that make this technique work. We're here. Okay, so like I said, look at the other hand. So here in my parry <clears throat> turn into my block, but I'm not quite this don't do that please mira all right you open you center line for the split a second and you want to get for you right once again so we got over here see that once again that is a big mistake so what i want you guys to do is one bam so now you, you're gonna contour both together and keep the center line tie cover and protect it. Once again, Sansa. So I got over here, Santiago. And so the checking hand is just a checking hand. It's a protecting because the blocking is coming back. Yeah. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. All right, this is key. Because you use this, you're going to use in everything. And then you pass it over. And so on. All right. So let's go together now. Have your right forward. Drop it and look at the hand. See how much I pass. I don't know if you guys see. All right. So go one. Once again, just drop it one and then bam, passing through. Look. Hop. And I bring this hand back and I slide up, deflect and break and then stepping through. You're going to do close me over here. And look at this. So as my left go diagonally, if I got over here, this is my clock principle. If it, I go pretty much to 11 o'clock, this one will be to one o'clock, right? Wow, that's cool. So send it out. I don't want you guys to do this. All right? So you come straight. You're using now the power your weapon you're using the power your body so you did rotational force marriage of gravity and now it's time to do the back commands and using the forward moment passing and anchor so you bring it from diagonally to here watch i pass in diagonally and i bring it and i anchor back see you learn this, this is a brown belt technique, but you learn this and grip of death. When you got your opponent over here, you went down and you're shooting. As a matter of fact, we tend to do this, look. So if you are settled down, you don't need to open this. So my hand will collapse in. So he grab over here and take me there. I collapse and just my hand go there. See, my hand go there. 
because my body as it's collapsing down, it's giving enough, enough power to hit a really interesting, so it's go diagonally, pop, see, bam. So I don't do this. So I collapse in, and immediately I lift myself up. So I check in myself for my opponent. Don't stay here. So this is something that we all learn in camp and we try to figure it out. It's like when you're in the dark and try to find the switch. Where's the switch? Where's the light over here? What is it? All right. So you're coming up here. You lift yourself up as you strike. And now you got a really good palm heel and then collapsing right your middle finger in the filter by the, by the nose. And then it's because your body is, is up already, just pivot and the palm heel is go up. So what I'm trying to explain to you guys, when you go do this, anchor your elbow, and you got a really nice leverage here. And Campo we call Falcon, right? So right from here, now Santiago said, try to adjust yourself. So I don't do this. Don't show me the money yet. There you go, because he wake up. So I counter back. So you can really work your opponent. So from this direction here, see so you counter. Now this, that is karate. We don't do karate. That's why everything works salsa. All right. One pop. And I can pass over here, I can do new strike, or I can do whatever I want now. The extension is sweeping, pop, and then it's a buckle in between the leg and rear crossover. I don't know if you guys see that, fine, you take your opponent down, all right? But the matter of fact here is this palm. You don't wanna do this. So you pass it. So if you wanna, I wanna step in cut stance, so I did, I combined everything in such a really small, tiny circles and places. Let's go back to Dance with Darkness real quick to move on for the next one. So we come in here, don't change it, hop and cut, follow through palm, diagonally. See, don't do this because the power is by your rotational force pop, the shovel kick, and you guys are, all right? I hope that worked for you. Let's move on in the same type of, uh, uh, type of techniques. And the next one is called destructive kneel. And destructive kneel is very similar to, I'm gonna have a Santiago coming from my left flank. So now he throw a punch in my face, right? And, and I connect. And this is very similar to a, a technique that I love I did in Spain. It's called shield and maze. Very kamikaze-like. And don't worry, nothing's gonna happen to you because you intercept it. We're not meeting the action. Forget about that concept. We intercepting our opponent action. But when you see American Kempo as a very structure, it's just more Jekwondo than Kempo. All right. So this is very, very, we describe a lot of concept of Jirkundo into American camp. So when Santiago is coming, I connected. So I meet in him. So it's like a him and I, we throw in a bunch of together. They already, once again, whoa. So nothing's gonna happen here, don't worry about it. So now you can go straight forward to him, pop. It's like a, when I share with you a uh, chill and mace, which we're not gonna go over today. Uh, so anyway, so we got over here, pop. And then what I did when I stepped forward, I closed the gap, right? We did in Thunder and Hammer in a very different way, but we kind of like closed the gap. But in this particular one, I, I step in diagonal. Santiago coming straight forward, 
and I need to go over here. This is cool, guys, because you're going to change direction from here to there. See? Mira, otra vez. Voy acá, Santiago, once again. So, el puño viene y me encuentro con Santiago en el centro y cuando vengo en el centro, como dice una canción, pa' adentro. All right? So, I go right in the center and then I drop. All this happened as one. Pop! And now I grab. Go ahead, Santiago, I'm sorry. Boom! And I grab, I do my close kneel and I, and I do the motorcycle. Accelerate your motorcycle. motorcycle. Boom! Now when we got this over here. Why kneel? Now, whatever happened, the activity that you guys did in the first, by bending his knee, you guys follow up with your wine kneel. So in the beginning, you did it with your left, with your lead leg. Now you collapsing with your right. Now, alignment-wise, I want to take this. I don't want to be like planets, but I want to use the stick. All right. Sometimes you need it. I understand, Mr. Planner. Go ahead. So the first one, so I connect in this guy. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys follow me here. I'm going to take my left connecting with the line, the angle line that is made in forming by his left back there. Now, if I follow that direction, see, I follow that direction. The only thing I need to collapse now. So I'm using a really cool rotational force. That is the first. And the second, I come in over here. I'm going to move back over here. So watch this. And the second, I, I take the line that he's forming. He's right. So let's take the heel. Where the heel is coming for? In a really nice 45 degree. So this is in a perfect alignment with his left from the back. So when I do the second one, guys, this is the first one. When I do the second one, I step in over in that corner. See, I throw it right in the corner of the stick. I, I think we got to move back so everybody can see us. Guys, this seminar is going to cost money, guys. All right, so we got here. You get right in the corner. And when you get that corner, which is forming, See, I'm in the perfect alignment with his heel. All right, so you collapse in there. Pop. So Santiago and I, we are no more matching angle in the same square. Santiago and I, we are forming a really perfect align, alignment in the same, in the same orbit. And I take advantage of that. All right, so I use it again. That's why. In Kempo, we use a concept called dimensional freedom. If I don't fill that gap, Santiago will use it against me. Your opponent will use it. So if I go over here, Santiago will buckle the leg. Oh, that's it. That's it. Buckle me. There you go. That's the only thing he got to do. If I don't approach enough here, Santiago will put the knee there and buckle. All right? So either or, him or myself, I want to take the initiation. I want to fill those gaps. So once again, I come in over here and I spoon, I collapse in there. When I do the back knuckle and the palm heel, that's why in the form you got you need to describe close kneel, wide kneel, neutral ball. You got to be precise where you stand and your location. And I bow this once again, and like I did before. See, I. Man, and I counter and I use in that formation of this really nice, beautiful archer back. And I use again. Wow. So I go right in the spine and right in the kidneys. Wow. All right. So now I come in over here. You guys do near strike. Pop. See, so the near strike is strike an incident angle. Not deflecting. It's an incident angle. So go right straight to the target. You're not deflecting. You're using both. But in this case, it's an instant angle. So what I'm doing here, <clears throat> I do my new strike, pop, which is kind of like he's collapsing here. And I rear crossover. If you see some tackle position, he's doing dancing limbo. All right? Pop. So I can go pop this far. So you don't need to extend it up. It's like pop. Ooh, beautiful. 
really so now this hand over here i don't know if you guys see you follow me what does this do old school remember you guys did this all right stay there there's no reason to bring it up when you got a beautiful beautiful twist stance which create an amazing rotational force don't bring the arm there and you did because once again <clears throat> And let me tell you this, and that's what happened to me in this process to 15 years ago, my campo changed. I break and I remark it again. And I say, you know what? There's something about the average camp. There's something else up there. And that's what I want to share with you guys today. I want you campo change. I don't want you to be like the hamster because that happened to me for many years, be like the hamster. When finally I saw the light, boom, get back. We went back again. Right, but today I want to give you something that it disattached for when you guys are and free yourself. All right, one thing is know the system. If you know it, remember the techniques and the point, and everything good for you. I don't need to, you, you, I have to remember because I'm the teacher, but you are the student, you're the, you're the one who you are the artist. You need to be the art, you don't need to memorize art. All right, it's not of the system. One thing, not the system. I'm pretty sure when you get your formal education, there's a lot of things you learn. There are many you memorize and many, many of them done already. But what you get in the end, you can educate, right? Do you remember things that you learned in eighth grade? Probably you don't. But what you learn from your formal education you, you know how to take notes, you know how to study, you know how to read, you know how to read and understand. So there's many other things that it's in you. That's the, the formal education created in individual. The formal education is not expecting you memorize everything. You remember the day in the history? You probably don't. I remember some of them probably. When was the French Revolution? Probably you. But you know, you know what I'm talking about, but you don't remember exactly the day, the hour, the year, but you know what I'm talking about. But why you get your formal education a way to structure your mind. Now you know how to take notes, you know how to memorize, you know how to get the information from a book. That's what you get in your formal education. So in Kempo, they told us, show me the long two. Oh, you don't know Kempo. Oh, long two? No, sorry, Bruce, you forgot. Five sword, you know the extension of a leaping crane? You know the extension of kinds of the tiger? Listen, I got life, man. I have no time to memorize all those things. Well, I memorize because once again, I'm the teacher. I'm a screw. But now you, you need to be the art. You are the art. When a musician plays the guitar, he's not thinking the notes. He's not thinking, he's not thinking in, the educa in the way he learns. He just does. He do it. So I want you guys to think in different perspective today. The way we do Kempo is the way we learn Kempo. And what I mean by that, we learn by the numbers. So we speed up the numbers. <laughs> Total, okay, I'm a Che Guevara of camp. I'm creating a new revolution here. And I hope you guys vote for me. Be different in the art. You are an artist. When you do Kempo, you don't think in Kempo. You are Kempo. You don't do Kempo. You are Kempo. Kempo is in you. Kempo is in you. You are the art. When, the, when Picasso, I, I went to the museum in Spain. Uh, what's the name of the museum in Spain? Uh, the art museum? Forget the name. Anyway, it was across the street from, uh, from, 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 I'll tell you right now. Um, La Real Academia Española de la Lengua. Right across the street from that building. From the Royal uh, Spanish uh, Language Center. That museum. So I was looking at Picasso and I was thinking, wow, this is, I mean, I'm in front of Picasso here. This is, a Pica this is unbelievable. And I was thinking to myself, probably, 
probably when Picasso turned into what Picasso we know now, I don't think Picasso learned with that type of expression. He learned the pain with a very formal structure. In Picasso generation, all that generation of painters or artists, they learn with the same specific method. Over year, Picasso found himself. So when Picasso expressed in the canvas, he didn't express the pain, he expressed Picasso there. He become the art, he become the, the paint. Salvador Dali, all those guys. That is his true expression. What Bruce Lee said. Bruce Lee said, one of the hardest things is to express yourself through the art. He was right. He was so ahead of his time, extremely. He was a uh, Albert Einstein of martial arts. Not a mention of Mark. It was more scientific type of mind, even though when I love Kempo, I was amazing realistic artist first, you know, the basic of the compass. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely, brother. All right. Anyway, so let's get back over here. So we got one and I caught it immediately because I need to not meet each other. I really intercepted uh, Santiago line when I got over here and I just pivot rotation of fourth. Bam! And when I got him here, boom. Okay, so I connect him with the line, like I said before. So I drop it, prop, and I come. So it's not one and then two. It's like, prop, because it's almost deflecting. And I got right in place, and my hand is over here. I don't know if you guys with me right now, guys. Be with me, guys, because I, I want to share this information. So don't bring the hand up here now. You don't need to load it. You already load it over here. I load it when he don't see. I'm unloading. And he's obscure as well. So my hand is over here, pop, and I whang, and I drop it. Once again, just I drop him and my hand as well. Bam, and down. So this hand it doesn't need to be up here, but that's the way we all learn, right? You guys with me? This is such an 80s campo, right? Okay. Try to do on the street, you screw. I'm not saying the technique. No, I said the motion. No, no, no. forget about the technique. Those techniques, they're not meant to be a technique for self-defense. They're prototype of case of pattern motion. They're drills. In other words, they're drill. So you got over here. And look at this hand, actually. Oh, I can bring over here now. I can break it. Wow, beautiful. Anyway, my hand was right in his back. I'm doing the shape of the crane. Pop, I put my leg over here. So now I've extended myself. See? So it's right. So you got it? Right in the back. Now, when I pivot here, look at this hand. All right, because the power of the rotational force is not just creating a good archer, but it bring his way down already. So I don't need to come in over here because I will lose the momentum. Bam! And then down, all right? To not make more damage. So those habits that we learned in the past that we come in, thank you, Johnny. We got Monday, 12.30. Those that have it, we carry on and we try to deal with, it's too much, all right? We need a new training method. So when we got over here, pop, and I bring the hand back and wham, boom. That's all you guys need. Give it the honor the way you create in the power, right? I think we are there with the time. Okay, uh, by the way, let me, uh, let me take a pause here. Open the microphone, guys. Can we do uh, any, any questions so far? Because I think if we are, I'm being... I don't give it time to you guys.
to express yourself, your thought. Any question that you guys want to? I have questions. Yes. <laughs> Tell me. Uh, why was this part of the class also so good? <laughs> <laughs> because we're so blessed to have you here. We want to be the best for you because you want, you're going to be the next one to carry the torch. So we want to, we want to make sure we give you good information. It's not we are good. We give it the best to you because you're going to be the next one to carry this information. You are the new generation who is going to carry the art. So we want to make sure to be in a good hands. Yes, hey. <laughs> Can I ask you a question, question sir? Quick? Do I have time for a question? Yes, sir. Mr. Pasaglia. How you doing? Very good, brother. I'm so blessed. So, yeah. yeah so, so I have a question. Um, it's, it's actually something that um, I kind of discovered through my own training. In Tempo, we have, uh, which you kind of touched on, we have so many different principles that Ed Parker um you know, shared with us. Uh, those principles came from our education, not in martial arts, but through Correct. Uh, school and college, you know, um, physics. And um, so th we have so many principles, you know, regarding bowed force, rebounding, directional harmony. I mean, just so many things that we are told Correct. to, you know, try to add to our, our, our technique to enhance our overall ability to protect ourselves. So, Absolutely. so one of the things that I found really, really interesting, and I'm sure Nelson will appreciate this, is something that I um, that I don't think that we can ever really truly um, um, evolve when working on another body, and that's the concept of resistance, because Correct. resistance is what allows us to create some of that energy that we need for rebounding. Um, borrowed force. I mean, they all kind of go hand in hand. So one of the things I started to realize is that when we work with a partner, we can't hit as hard as we would normally like to, because obviously we would hurt ourselves or hurt that our, our partner. So right. in order to truly, truly enhance our overall ability and speed, we have to really tap into that resistance that, you know, like you say, meet the action. We can only meet that action so much for somebody, right? Intercepting, right? We can only we can only do that so much. Um, otherwise, we'd be hurting them. So Correct. I started to realize that in order to take what we do to the next level, we have to incorporate more bag work, pad work, not on a self defense as a whole, but on individual basics and techniques. Absolutely. You, um, so I'm just kind of sharing this. It's not really a question, but I'm just kind of sharing this. And I don't know if anybody else kind of feels the same way or has kind of made those own discoveries. But my question to you is, of all the principles that we have in Kempo, do you, do you find that there's just two or three, if you had to choose, you'd say, hey, focus on, you know, resistance, focus on, you know, um, marriage of gravity, um, rotational force. Are there, are there some that are, you know, generically speaking, more important than others? Does that yeah, make I sense? Think it, yeah, it definitely makes sense. I'm thinking um, one of the, the, the problems that I found in Campo is, is the method, once again. Because uh, when you discover a good method that make it really truly works, those concepts, because they're very advanced concepts. So... And the way to describe, you got to be very, um, you got to saturate too much sometime in order to explain and show those concepts. But uh, they, they are more high and more less, less defined as we all learn. So when you discover things like a contour body, point of origin, those, those not mention many others, those two, you got so much, so much to develop into a new type of method. And that's one of the problems in camp we have. We got everything is need to move back and then go forward and coming up and coming down and coming in reverse and so on. So when you know how to produce 
the power by using you way. It doesn't matter where your hand is located. So far, we created power to power. That's why we are fast in camp. We, we, we need to work in speed because you're creating power by um, placing your hands in somewhere else and using the way of your body. So you dealing with two power, it's too much. And not even mention that obviously every time you open and extend your arms and your, your weapons, your center line is open. So that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm here to share. It's a new method. It's a, it's a, it's the Kempo method that it's, it's, it's in, it's in the system already. Because once again, we interpreted the system, the techniques and all that I show over there, cause I got, you know, the curriculum over there on the wall, but we interpret it in that with karate. And that is one of the main problems in Kempo. Instead of really emphasis more in, in, in abilities, we teach curriculum we teach the program every time right tony yes tony how you doing thank you greetings from dallas texas guys how you doing brother good wow. good yes. hey hey uh, i wanted to thank you for uh for your uh for your time today uh i, I really thank appreciate you, it i really enjoyed this this whole seminar so i just i just want to say thank you for that um my question is uh so so going from by the numbers Right. So, so, so we all, you know, you, you spend time talking about that, learning by the numbers. How do you, how do you feel like, like the, the transition happened where you go from by the numbers to, to, to like, kind of like, you know, like the flame patch, right. Where you go from uh, mechanic to technician to engineer. How do how, how do you feel that your wow, practice cool. changed in order to be able to transition to each one of those different stages? Right. So, so, I mean, you could, I can, I can do, I can do uh, the techniques 10,000 times by the numbers and get really good at doing them by the numbers. But, but how do I, how do I transition that practice Absolutely. Into, to where it's a flow? I understand. Great. Thank you, Tony. Um, yes, actually, uh, when we learn by the numbers, we tend to accelerate the numbers. So for example, and, and by the number is the stage where uh, you do one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you go one, two, three, four, five, six. And you progress and then you train and you go one, two, three, four, five, six. And you progress and you say, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then, right? You never condense the numbers. So we don't do one, two, three. We go two, four, six, three, nine, 12. So what I mean by that, for example, Tony, when you do by the number will be one snap into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So what are you gonna do as you progress and then you train it, you're gonna do that faster than that beginner. But are you doing the same thing as beginner because you're not con condensate the number. It's like in the form you got, um, not just condensate, what I'm saying it's, um, you don't timing well the minor, the major and minor move, right? So for, and, and uh, by the number, everything pretty much it's, it's major move. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? All right, but there you got inserts and in, by the number, their move, there are inserts. For example, you got over here, so matter of fact, when we do a uh, snap and twig, I want to show, show this with you real quick. We all tend to do this, right? And look at this. <laughs> all right. So when you do the shape of the crane and you move in horizontal plane, you don't, you don't have any kind of stability, all right? So you don't, you don't have a bracing angle. Your bracing angle is where it's over here. So when you do snap and twig real quick, I want to share this with you guys. You're snapping, right? You're pushing. This is deflecting. So it's not quite this. So I just, I pass in. As I pass, I create a really good snapping. Now I bring a hand sword downward, prop, see? And I connect it. So I bring Santiago down here and I shoot him right the throw. So, so see, I didn't count one, two, three. So what I did there, Tony, I did 
three and one. So when you do the short form one or short form two, let me move to short form two. You go method wise, hammering. Right, that's a method hammering, inward block. Mm -hmm. Hand sore. Again, hammering. All right. Mm -hmm. I know Parker's gonna kill me. I don't care. Watch this. <laughs> there's another way. There's another way to hammering as a method. You're already here, Tony. That's gonna that's gonna answer your question, Tony. So you're here, Tony. You're stepping through. Your hand is already and framing of what in your block and your meditation. Doesn't matter if just moving and you're already and frame of your block. So now, if you step in, when you step in and creating the first type of force here in the front is what? Forward momentum, right? Back and mass. So use it. So how you, you're not thrusting. When you're moving forward, you're doing what? You're doing a hammering. So you mm -hmm. don't need to hammer over here, load it. Right, right. It, it was learned, it, remember, this is information. It's from the 60s. If, be careful it's not before. So it was the way to explain the world, the method of hammering. Today, we don't need any more. I explain to my student, but I don't teach to my student that. Because if I teach you that, I want to create a bad habit, but I need to give you the factor, the factor history element. I'll explain to you, but if I make it work you, later on, you're gonna have to learn another art. So you're never gonna, I'm not saying involving because campus already there. When the Spaniel came to America, they don't create America. America already was there, beautiful America. The water, the forest, beautiful. They discover, we need to discover, Kempo doesn't involve. We involve. Now the art, the art is already there. It's a matter of us to go and get it. So when people say, no, American Kempo involve, no, BS, never. Kempo is up. Kempo is in the Himalaya. Go there. You're going to go to the Himalaya. You need to do the work. The Kempo art exists already. You don't bowl. I'm sorry, the art never involved. Us, we involve to develop. Remember, I said in the beginning of my teaching, my guy generation, this guy generation is not the same generation of about 20 years ago. I got guys, there's even six degrees, seven degrees, they're coming to training here. And when they see this guy, they feel like, oh my gosh, I, need, I feel like I need to learn a new art. All right. Not because, no, I'm, I'm discovered the art. I, I involve, not Kempo. So things like that, for example, you got to really the method here of hammering. And what happened when you get in the target? What's the next thing? The hand sword. So my question is, you need to pull him back again to strike? Definitely not. So we're going to put the number together. So you got one now. You don't have one, two. Tony, follow me. I hope you're with me. So how many you got over here? Mm -hmm. Two. Dos. Mm -hmm. You got two. Now. Now you got one. So you went you went right from here into your into your strike. So correct. Right? Correct. So it's kind because of a you're not, flow. You're not quite blocking and uh you creating more deflecting because American campus is striking art. Remember, Kempo Kempo American Kempo is the is the R for excellence and striking. <clears throat> so if I go to Santiago over here. God save me, right? So if it's striking, I deflect to strike. It's not a blocking art. We're striking art. So mm -hmm. my block is a deflecting action because I want to kill. I'm shooting, mm -hmm. All right? The mission is shoot. The way to get there is tactical. So you got to find a tactical move to shoot. So this is the tactical to strike. Mm -hmm. All right, so watch this. So you got one, two. Mm -hmm. So you got how many move now? Four move and two. Mm -hmm. All right, so now when we work in techniques, 
like for example, snap and twig, like I show you. So he snap, I don't want to hit too much, but you cut in diagonally. I bring some tackle down. Look, I expose the elbow and hand source coming over here, pop, and then I pop this one up and I go one. So it's very, very smooth and, and short. So it's one, once again, so go one. I never did one, two, right? Mm -hmm. That's the way you learn. Right. Bam, that's the way you do. So how many move I got over here? Tres. Mm -hmm. Mira. Uno, dos, tres. Mm -hmm. How many? One. Mm -hmm. So I did three and one mm -hmm. pop. How many did there? Three and one. one. Are, are you having to go? This, when I move this one, so that's why it works fast because obviously I don't condense this move up here. So I bring it short. So I'm using, remember, we got low case, I mean, upper case, middle case, and low case. Yeah. When you work in a upper case mode, this is what happened, Tony. I hope this worked for everybody. This is an upper case mode. I want to work over here in a middle case. See? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in middle case, what I need, it's I need that little shuffle forward and rotational forward to impact. Yeah. So now the body is doing the job. The weapon is doing his part. The weapon is the utensil. The power is given the body. When the boxer does a hook punch, this is a hook punch. Yeah, but that's the orbit of hook punch. Mm -hmm. So what the boxer does, he know that is the orbit. He's gonna take the last 45 degree of the orbit. Watch this, let me give you this. I hope you guys are with me now. This is the orbit. You can take from here, from the middle, or from the last 45, it's up to you. Where you wanna take the orbit. Where are you going to jump on the orbit? You want to travel from the beginning of the orbit, from the middle of the orbit, or for the last 45? Well, the modern boxing today, they take the last 45 from the orbit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything else done by what? Rotational force. So, and actually, they come in almost very straight. And the last point mm -hmm. of resistance is when they get in the target. Mm -hmm. So now let's take in here. This, this is Campbell, that boxing. Concept is Kempo. So we're using Kempo the same thing. So I write over here, pop, see? Mm -hmm. So I'm changing this huge orbit. So I'm gonna jump at the orbit. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the orbit, but I'm gonna jump in the last 45 degree of the orbit. Yeah. So when I do this, and obviously he's very obscure. He, he doesn't see what's going on. And then I apply what? The palm heel either underneath, pop, or on top. So I go palm heel, prop, and the elbow, that happened. So I don't need to recall my elbow back again. I'm sorry, Santiago. Santiago, just get braces. I'm poor Santiago, man. You're going to have a very straight T now. So watch this. Big mistake. Because we always think in Campo, the cancellation angle is the one that allow your body to pull back because you finish your opponent. So you tenderize the mid and then you can create in distance in order to get to the target. No, wrong. Even here, I drop, look at this, Tony. So I just anchor myself, mm. you see? Mm. So I go to the target. The you target you I go to the you weapon. Yep. There you go. Yep. Where, yep. where you learned that? In glance and salute, Mira. Mm -hmm. So when the glance and salute is coming, I want to do shadow first. So you come in here. Mm -hmm. We all get caught with this technique. Mm -hmm. And we all learn this in mass. Watch the bad habit. Right. All right. Let's break it down there if it that works. So I got Santiago over here. Santiago shooting this. Boom. Boom. Ready? Where's Santiago? Oh, you're here, Santiago. 
Mm -hmm. All right, watch this. We got over here. So I caught it. The first thing is do this. And then in my rotation, I need the eagle block. So this one here in Campbell, we go right and block. And right and block, you did in the form. Remember from four? Mm -hmm. That's where we got this technique in, in, in the form. So that, see, and the form doesn't show the technique, but he show you a master key. So it's, it's a matter of starting that to add in, in every, and you can put on every technique, that's wrong. And you can, so when he's coming, so I connect and immediately, I move away the same way we did this one. And then I connect it on each other. Pop. So when I got this, I bring it down. Pop. And this is pass. That's another thing we all learned. Uh, I want to have Santel here, a beautiful face Santel has. Look, we think it's like, it's this. Mm -hmm. It's not an incident angle. It's deflecting. So you pass in with the edge of your hand. Mm -hmm. You deflect it. How can I show this? Uh, so you do this. The edge catch the angel of the jaw. Watch, Tony. I did this and I pass. <clears throat> so pass in such a way that I can do a what? Shape of the crane. Now, if they grab over here, what's your point and actually try to do a uh, reaction is pull back, right? He wanna get out of there. Once again, go. See, he pulled me back, mm -hmm. go for it. Bam, that's what you want, take it. That's, I'll give it what you ask. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me mm -hmm. show you. So now mm -hmm. let me go back here. I don't know if you guys can see my knee. See my knee when he pulled back, I do my knee pop and then I follow through. Mm -hmm. See the elbow collapse in there. So it's an anchor. That's what we do elbow in camp. We don't do this, that's karate. They do that in camp, we do this. We're more sophisticated because the, the, the camp basics are, they call sophisticated, but they're not quite sophisticated. That is the camp. It's the way that Mr. Park explained to the world that, you know, to make a different what Eric and Kempo articulate their basics and they call sophisticated, but not sophisticated. That's the way it is, right? That's the way Kempo basics are. But we don't discover until later. You take maybe year, 20 years of training and then finally you discover the basic, the sophisticated basic. So guess what? It's too late now. When you discover the art after 20 years, you want to be the master, not the art, the master of yourself. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. um, before any of us leave, I, I would like to ask you, and related with the Tony Gonzalez uh, question, you're talking in, in, in really different approach in the method of uh, learning the, the, the system. But have you think in tools for that, let's say, preparing a set, a special set that prepare. Uh, Tony was asking for a transition, right? Maybe you can prepare a, a set or form or, or, or any, no, you're using the same. You're using the same technique. <laughs> no, because it's once again, when you create another form set, you creating another, you is get contradict to the method because that when, when you add other things is because the method is not complete the function. Got it. That's the problem we got in Kimball. That's why we add in other art, don't get me wrong. Uh, Filipino martial art, Jiu Jitsu, uh, people put crap my guy, wonderful, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. But the problem oh. is many times it's, it's bring it down the whole true philosophy of the art because we haven't really discovered the true art of Kempo. That's why we touch ceiling with the art and we need a complement with other things. But when the Kempo already got the answer, we haven't really discovered because the prominent Kempo is, where the prominent, truly prominent Kempo is, is the way we execute in basic. They never give it the, the tool, the really good tool to develop abilities. That's why it's better if you if someone want to learn self-defense, I reckon, oh, you want self-defense? Go, Krav Maga. Don't come into camp. Why? 
because over here, I need to educate your body. All right, and Krav Maga and other self-defense system, they're gonna give you tactical move. Yes, great. But when you be in the situation, you need to, and your adrenaline is 100% up, and you be so nervous, you're not gonna memorize, you're not gonna be execute and memorize move because it's in your conscious. And the only way your conscious works well, when you relax, you need to function and your subconscious that doesn't move become natural. So in order to learn a good self defense technique, you need to educate your body again. And how you educate your body again? By giving good tools that create abilities. That happened to us, our common, you know, 80s, 79, Kempo, 80s, Kempo in Chile. It was more All like right. Kikuchinkai, <laughs> Kikuchinkai Karate. It was more like, it was an American camp. It was a good fight. What happened, those people that training back then, they got a, such a great ability when they do any type of, they tend to do this, pa, roundhouse kick, because they become so good that that information is already registered already in the subconscious and they become so good that that is already part of them, its ability. In Kempo, we function with mind. You need to memorize things. You Got need it. to put everything in perspective. So okay, yeah. obviously we learn by the numbers. We have some drills. We got the striking. We got the finger. We got the, the punching. We got the elbows. We got the kicking set. We got up. Uh, the forms show you this, this direction, blah, blah. Okay, great. That is, if it, this will be a college, that will be the first semester of information. So what happened in Campo, that is the whole. No, that's one part to understand <clears throat> the blueprint of the system. That's the blueprint. Now take the blueprint and let's build the building. Well, we never build. That's what we think in Kempo. No, we got the blueprint and we got the solution and the blueprint. But take the blueprint and put it together and build now. The new building is not going to happen because we don't have that training. We don't. I also have a, a couple of questions for uh, Master Jimmy. Two questions. I would like uh, to ask uh, Master Jimmy one question for him. And then the second one, relate both of you. It's okay for you, Master Frank? Sure. Okay, Jimmy. Master. Most of us uh, have a camp like a mother art, but since you are working with the Filipino uh, fashion way uh, with the knives, most of us can see, ah, oh, but that's five swords. Uh, but that's, that's, that was reversing maze, uh, upside down. But that, mm. any of us can, can think in, in, that, uh, in that way. But the drills you teach today are well known in Filipino, right? They're, they have a, a, a name. I, I, I don't remember if you put the name when you start the exercises. So yeah. do not confuse, do not confuse because it's really similar to Kempo Moon. So any, yeah. any, any, any of us can say, ah, but, but I can pick a digital fundum with knives and look, look like Kempo. But no, you're using FMA, right? I'm using FMA and, and you know, the, again, this is my personal opinion. Uh, like I said at the very beginning, I don't believe um, uh, Kempo is a weapons art at all. This is my opinion. Uh, you know, you know what you, some of the stuff you could do in Kempo, you can translate to a weapon, but, you know, certainly in Filipino martial arts, there's thousands upon thousands of drills to the point where it's almost better not to get set in a drill. Like I, like, like sometimes the way I was taught in the past was don't focus too much on that drill because you'll be set in that way of thinking. Let's change things up and constantly give you a, a constant evolving um, way of moving rather than being set by a, a specific routine, for example, Nelson. So like, like to me, I, I think that, um, uh, you know, this is my opinion, you know, uh, you know, Master Frank was saying, you know, about sometimes it takes 15, 20 years, right? And, and I would agree with that. Um, because I like to speak to the masses. I don't like to speak to any in individual that may be, 
you know, might be really, really high up and say, you know, look how, you know, so-and-so moves. I like to speak to the masses and what I see from the masses, in my opinion, is insufficient weapons training in Kempo. That's just my honest opinion. So I, I try to use the FMA to improve my Kempo. And similar, similarly, like with like jujitsu, like I know a lot will say Kempo already has jujitsu. In my opinion, it's only my opinion, but nothing could be further from the truth because joint locks and chokes don't constitute jujitsu. That's like this much. Like to me, when we talk about things like manipulation control, this is my personal opinion. I learned what manipulation control was when someone was mounted on me and I couldn't breathe. Like to me, that's manipulation control, not close enough where I can get choked and I can elbow them and knee them and reverse a lock. I mean, someone trying to suffocate you. So I feel like for me, the Gracie Jiu Jitsu gave me a whole new appreciation for Kempo. It didn't make me diminish Kempo. And in fact, it did the opposite, but it gave me a new way of thinking when I'm thinking about, you know, locking horns and we rich hand the groin, we grab the groin, we elbow, we finish with a sandwich. And I think, okay, if someone knew how to pl apply a proper go a gu gu guillotine there, I'm going to sleep. You know, so I, I, to me, when I do this cross training, it all reverts back to my Kempo. I, I you know, I, and I know that the mantra, the way of thinking is, you know, that is um, insufficient uh, Kempo knowledge to have to venture out. To me, it's the polar opposite. It's take what I can to bring back to Kempo to make my Kempo stronger. That's my, that's how I would answer that, Nelson. Thanks for that, sir. And like I said, and I forget to say thanks to all the people here and thanks to you, Master. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Jamie, but, but by the way, I forgot to say that since the beginning. But anyway, the second question is it's a, it's a tricky one because how can you mix the concept or it is possible to mix the concept of false trouble with no learning? Uh -huh. Oh, but, I see what you're saying, yeah. Uh, Master, if it is possible to mix those both concepts? To me or to Jamie? To, first of all, to Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it is possible to mix. I mean, I mean, when I like this is me, like when I see Master Frank Vigoro move, I have to say this, my friend, that guy's lightning really, 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 really quick and and hits hard, too. But the, but but I also think like there's a there's a there's a fine line between what we call false travel and telegraphing. I don't have to pull an arm back back here to be able to launch a good punch, that's telegraph. Someone intercepts my shoulder and stops my hand and it hits me with an elbow or a knee, fights over. But I, but, but I also feel that, you know, um, uh, body size, height, sex, I absolutely think matter. So I will honestly say, in my opinion, there are simple, some Kempo moves that are more advantageous for some body types than others. That's my personal opinion. Like, yeah. I, like, like if, This is me speaking, but if, if, if I don't know, like I'll, if someone, I, I know it's an uncommon attack, but Hey, it's one of the 154. So I think all is game. If some, if someone puts a full Nelson on someone uh, and someone honestly thinks they like a, a much bigger, heavier, stronger person puts a full Nelson on someone very tiny or a female. And you can just, I know we could say leverage, but you can pick the person up and spin them. I, I struggle with it. I just feel like there's better options. <laughs> so that, that is me speaking, you know, so Nelson, to answer your, yeah, to answer your question. I, yeah. I think you can bridge the gap between uh, what master Frank was saying and false travel. But I also think, I also think, um, you know, there's some people that need a bit that will need, that will need some travel to get, to do some sufficient damage. If you're hitting something hard, that's my personal opinion. That. Thanks for your opinion, Master Frank. Please, please. It's not the idea. Uh, <laughs> Start a debate here. The idea is. Well, uh, I mean, oh no, no, it's no debate. I, debate. I, lo I love that. Yeah, not debating. Just you know, people. You know, ultimately, you whatever uh, works for them. But the problem is, in Campo, obviously, uh, size matter. We know that mass. Muscular is matter. We all mm. know. Mm. But the problem is, once again, going back in the in, in the method, uh, 
we got all this uh, top of direction, dimension and all that, but we haven't really ultimate, really training developed well, that's a problem. I mean, I mean uh, in order to knock somebody down, that's the only thing you need to do this in the groin. That's all you need, right? So we don't know precision, contour, balance, power. There's a lot of things that we don't work in Kempo. We don't work over precision, once again, because the method that we use it, it's based so much based in the weapon as, as direction and dimension. And what I mean by that, we understand diagonalis, horizontal, vertical, and circular. That's what we learn in camp. Right. Right. You mean can I, uh, say something real quick? I just want to, can I hop in quick, real quick? So, let me finish my idea real quick. So, um, because we don't, we don't have that kind of training and then you got, for example, I remember when all made Tatum, we said, wow, Tatum, definitely Tatum, it's the man. <laughs> Strong, fast, powerful, the whole night yard. And we thought that that was Kempo. When actually, it is Kempo. Right. So the, the question is, how come in the Kempo community, just one guy, one master, something is wrong and something is, is, is aiming in, in the wrong direction in the art. How many master of the art? I'm not comparing anybody with anybody. We're talking about Tatum is 72 years old now, right now. How come it's just one kind in the whole universe of community of Kempo, just one guy? Something it's not quite aiming in the right direction of the art. How come this guy is so sophisticated? And then you have, you got two guys, sorry. You got Tatum and then Paul Mills. <laughs> How many we are in just two? Because once again, those two guys, you know what? They really change the method. They really develop different abilities. So we can create in many more masters, new generation with the new method. That doesn't matter the size anymore. It doesn't matter the technique. Because when I'm not looking at technique, you say something very clear in here. You say every time you see something in Kempo, it's, oh, wow, that looked like a Thunder and Hammer. Oh, look, that looked like a Dance of Death in Kempo. So, you know, we're training so badly, <laughs> so badly that we don't see nothing else but technique and the form. So we think systematically. We don't think in ability-wise because you need to memorize, you're overwhelming with the system and you need to be in the system. You nothing out of the box. It's one of the problems. And once again, the problem is not the system is the way the system has been administrated, good method of training. Uh, Joe, you have a question? Uh, I, didn't have a, I didn't really have a question. I just wanted to say, uh, first and foremost, uh, um, it's great to see everybody again. Um, I can't wait till all this nonsense is over and we're all back on the floor together. Um, I have to get running and I have to leave in a minute. So I just want to say, uh, um, I, I got to see most of this today and I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Seabrook, I don't think we've ever formally met, so it was good to see you and uh, hopefully opportunity will present itself someday down the road. Um, um, in closing, I just wanna say before I leave, um, uh, like, again, great to see everybody. Um, uh, but to Jamie's point, um, I couldn't agree with him more on some of the things that he brought up. And, um, and it's kind of funny because I'm listening to both of you guys explain it and um and i see i see 50 50 like <laughs> I, I you know and it's really funny i i like and i'm and i'm listening to frank say how you know this is a discovery and, that, and i and i agree with that 100 like 
you know, when we go through this system of Kempo, that's really what it's about. It's a discovery of oneself, you know, because any any point in time in the heat of battle, we can deviate from whatever we're doing. And there's not too much that, you know, a, a, an eye poke or a shot in the groin or a shot in the throat won't take care of nowadays. Right. So I think to Frank's point, we got to kind of keep that in perspective. Like, you know, these are all just ideas. They're teaching us a discovery about ourselves and and principles and ways to enhance what we already know. But in reality, in the heat of battle, we can deviate from this system and what we do uh, at any given point in time. And listen, like I said, a shot in the eyes will, you know, make a lovely set of parting gifts <laughs> if we if if need if we need to go that route, right? So, but listen, it sounds like you guys all had a great time. Um, I miss you all dearly and um, uh, thank you for everything. And uh, I just want to share with you guys and uh, say goodbye formally when I didn't want to just disappear. So thank you for Thanks, everything. Sir. Joe, before, before you, before you, before you, before you thank you, Joe. But it was great seeing you, Joe. And if you have any power at all or have any uh, knowledge of any, any, any Boston Bruins fans, tell them to take it easy on the Leafs this year. Like, well, let's yeah. share the love. We need, we need to get through past that first round. So share the love a little bit, my friend. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> maybe maybe we can go to a game together someday. <laughs> yep. I don't have a friend. You're only about four hours. Where are you in Canada? Whereabouts? Yeah, two hours from Toronto. Oh, are you? Okay. All two right. hours west of Toronto. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're not too far away from me then. No. <laughs> I, N Nelson, I actually have to leave in a minute also. Okay, if someone else have a question for my, uh, Master Jimmy before he leaves. All right, guys, take care. Alguna, alguna, alguna pregunta en español, by the way? Alguna pregunta en español para Master Jimmy o para el Master Frank? Alguien más? Yo, Alguien más tiene alguna pregunta? Anyone else have a my question? Pleasure, Diego, Diego. Mendoza, Master, uh, Mendoza. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, yeah. Maestro Frank. Mucho gusto saludarte. Bendiciones. Un abrazo. Gracias. Igual. Igualmente, maestro. Mira, a mí me ha costado un poquito con la cosa del internet y ahora la cosa del inglés, pero ahí voy trabajando. Fíjate que realmente tengo la oportunidad de trabajar en una empresa israelí de seguridad, porque me pidieron ahí técnicas de defensa personal y cuando compartí con, con ellos varias técnicas del sistema American Kempo se asombraron bastante porque acuérdate que ellos trabajan lo que es Kram Maga, el sistema uh -huh. ese israelí y uh -huh. realmente eh, se dieron se sorprendieron porque eh, gracias a Dios pues eh, el sistema eh, ¿cómo se llama? que nosotros practicamos pues eh, es tan es tan especial tan, tan grande que realmente que cuando ellos hacen un movimiento para hacer el golpe nosotros hacemos tres, cuatro, cinco golpes, ¿verdad? En un solo movimiento. Entonces, ellos se quedaron asombrados y gracias a Dios, pues ahí estoy trabajando. Ahora yo te hago una pregunta. El sistema de Krav Maga, cuando empezaron a salir, ellos no hicieron un programa, sino ellos empezaron solo de lo que salía de las ideas o ya tenían un programa estipulado. Yo te pregunto esto porque muchos piensan que, que el sistema, es, es como siempre ha existido en todo el mundo, creo yo, que tu sistema es mejor, que mi sistema es mejor, pero realmente, eh, si nos ponemos a ver el sistema de, de ¿cómo se llama? De, del sistema de American Kempo, pues todo está en orden, pues todo está el por qué y para qué sirve, ¿verdad? No sé si me entiendes mi pregunta. Sí, bueno, yo no, yo desconozco de Krav Maga. No sé si hacen un sistema de, de nacimiento o lo han hecho posteriormente, pero me imagino como, como son los israelitas, eh, un pueblo organizado, entonces me imagino que desde, desde el concepto de la idea de, de su entrenamiento, porque tengo entendido que es un arte militar, de ahí nació primero. Sorry. Como el arte I have to leave, militar. sorry. All right, brother. Bye -bye. Thank, you. Thank you, brother. All the best. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you. Entonces, eh, no tengo, sé que es un arte eh, eh, 
de combate militar y desde esa base nace, me imagino que ellos tienen un programa, pero más puntual, hablando lo de Kempo, Kempo sí tenemos un programa, pero es un transcrito que necesita, si bien es cierto, hay una, una información que está estructurada, pero no está bien administrada, no está bien interpretada en mi ambiente. En es el problema que tenemos. Entonces, es, una, es un manual eh, que, está, que está bien ordenado, pero no está eh, correctamente, en mi opinión personal, eh, administrado, eh, transferido. Creo que ahí donde falla el arte, en mi entender, porque tendemos a pensar que Kempo está evolucionando, eso es lo que creemos. Y de, cuando dice, no, el arte está evolucionando, entonces ya tenemos un problema. El arte no ha evolucionado, el arte ya está allá. Nosotros somos que lo estamos conociendo. Ni siquiera hemos evolucionado, nosotros lo estamos conociendo. Es muy poco. Muchas gracias. Muy poco. Sí, sí. Muchas gracias, gracias, maestro, y bendiciones gracias. a todos. Los que están en, gracias a ti, Mark. Acá, ah, gracias, gracias por invitarme. Creo que estamos cerrando ya. Sí, estamos cerrando. Creo que nos quedamos solamente en España. Some people here. Thank you so much, guys. Terry, Frank, for you guys' support. Gracias. Awesome. All right. Love you guys. God bless you. Thanks. God bless you guys. Gracias. Bye. Bye.